Welcome to 2023. Flying cars and Turkish delight. <laughs> Ready? Ready when you are. Yeah. It's episode two, season two, Future Sounds FM. I'm back with the responsibility for leading this rudderless ship. Uh, thanks to Tom, who uh, did a brilliant job last time round. And uh, again, we're joined by Mr. Patrick Fakeman. And we've got a new guest uh, for this week. The first time he's been on the show, he's done some writing for the website. He's a. Uh, He's a, a, a very famous synthwave writer from the uh, Forever Synth Gang, which is now defunct, and they seem to have just joined up with us, which is uh, yeah, more than merrier. And he's also, yeah, super fun, fun fact as well, he's, he's also a lift attendant. So if you find yourself in a tall building <laughs> and you're looking to go to heights, he will take you to the floor that you request. Isn't that right? Welcome, Joe. Right. You have got several things wrong there. The very part of very famous is wrong, and the famous part of very famous is wrong, and the lift attendant part is basically correct. I'll give you that. So thank you for having me. Appreciate being here. It was that was you know it was the best intro and the worst intro I've ever had for yeah, an individual on here. Absolutely before. shambolic. So that, that's yeah, that's, that's, that's that. So we've got we've got um, an amazing interview. Uh, Tom managed to get the boys from Iverson. Of course, he is one of them now and uh, they, they went down to your studio and the chat is really interesting really fun uh, and it's offers some insights into their kind of thinking on where they're going as a band there's going to be some changes there and it's it's uh yeah always good to have them you managed to tame johnny and raise josh's levels of energy to about the right balance i felt you did a good job there <laughs> like a like a master conductor that's right yeah that's right i heard that josh fell off his uh off his chair didn't do any damage to your very expensive yeah, off, studio off my chair whilst he was yeah he was holding my nicest guitar as well um we checked on checked on that first before we checked on josh yeah of but course. both are fine good was good. it one That's of those orthopedic chair. chairs though let's give him some <clears throat> let's give him some benefit of doubt it was an orthopedic yeah, chair yeah it's kind it? of like you, you have to kind of straddle it um you have to get into kind of praying position yeah uh, yeah but yeah, it, it rejected he went around the wrong way didn't he didn't he approach it from the wrong angle yeah like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He went for sort of reverse. He does that a lot. And, um, <laughs> he does yeah. that a lot. Um, so yeah, guys, what have you been up to? I mean, it's uh, there's there's been quite a few big releases lately. There's some shows coming up. Um, have you guys managed to get to 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 any shows lately? What have you been What have you been doing, Patrick? I've been doing Christmas, and then I did a bit of oh, New yeah. Year. Because we haven't We've had a show I, I since, though. Yeah, we've had a yeah, show since I, Christmas. Have we had a show since Christmas? God, that's terrible. Um, I've been when did away. we do season? When did we do episode one, Tom? I'm looking to you for as the the fountain of authority in this rabble. Uh, just before Christmas. Okay, Thank happy you. Christmas, happy New Year, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think I was going crazy. I thought, hang on, I've not been doing this for a few weeks. No, so um, maybe I'll cut that bit slightly. Uh, I've been doing Christmas. No, no, no. It's, it's all good. good. Um, yeah. Bit of Christmas, bit of New Year. Went away very briefly into Eastern Europe. Came back home again. Wasn't as cold as I thought it might well be. A little bit of music, a little bit of writing. And, Did you defect um, while you were over there? Hmm? Did you defect to the east while you were over there? No, not this time. Last time, it caused a huge amount of trouble in the house. So, just kept it easy this time. Good stuff. West Good is stuff. best. Indeed, indeed. Controversy. I mm. like that. Uh, has, has anyone been been watching Slow Horses, by the way? That's what made me think of it. We've been binge-watched the whole two series. It's absolutely incredible. It's like, uh, if you haven't seen it, for people who are listening who maybe haven't got it in America, for example, it's got Gary Oldman, in, who's a brilliant actor. They, he, It's basically MI5. They're all people who were spies, who've either fucked something up or are just troublesome, can't be tamed, and so they get sent to this place called Slough House where they basically supposed to just be shuffling paperwork but it all kind of kicks off and it's uh, the two series well worth binging it's only six episodes in each ep in each uh, series so you can get through it quite quickly which is nice what's it on what uh... it's on apple but i think I'm, I'm sure okay. that there's i'm sure there's ways around these there's days. ways yeah, yeah there's technologically ways. minded sail <laughs> the high seas yeah exactly i did exactly. um i last week been watched a tv show called the bear which is on prime it's about well, uh, someone else said oh, that yeah. today that it's really good it's yeah cracking. okay watched, watched cooking. It in a day. yeah Watched it in a day. Wow. wow. Okay. Amazing. So it's about this young guy who um, his brother dies and leaves him this real grimy, um, 
takeaway joint in, I want to say, Chicago. Ah, like this that. is about the chef, yeah? The it's chef, about the chef. Guy, yeah. yeah. And yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. in how he's struggling. And it's absolutely brilliant. Really good. The mm-hmm. There's 10, epi- 10 episodes in the ninth episode. I won't give anything away, but that is by far the best episode of, of a TV show that I've seen for a long time, actually, as well, just the way wow. it was. So if you I want agree. to watch it, The Bear on Amazon Prime. Is um, Matty Matheson's in it, right? Big, big Canadian chef's in it. Big boy. Yes, that's right. He is. Yeah. Yeah. I plug a TV show, yeah, which, I, which I did put in the WhatsApp group and got diddly squat of a response from you guys. So, <laughs> Sorry, no. one, thank you very much. Uh, but two, it's Mr. In Between. It's an Australian show about a hitman. None of the American cheesy lines, none of the big explosions, just a guy who's a good dad, also has a bit of a heart. That's all I'm saying. That sounds great. It, it's episode two, sorry, season two, last episode. I haven't cried that hard in, oh. I don't know, since you know I watched what? Click with Adam Sandler. Do you know what? It's, it's really quick for you to come on and show your sensitive side within five mm-hmm. minutes. Yeah, like no, right. yeah, I, no, yeah, but trust me, it's the All dialogue, right. it's just believable, it's <clears> real, <throat> and the action is great, and there's, some, there's a lot of violence, a I'll, lot of I'll violence. I'll give it a go because I quite enjoy Australian films, and I've watched quite a few mm-hmm. Australian TV series. Uh, I find the sense of humour is really fun, like especially, and Kiwis as well, obviously, as well. It's quite quite dry right. often, but yeah, yes. no, I'll, I'll give that a go for sure. And Tom, what have you been watching, mate? Have you been watching anything? <laughs> Quick plug um, on, on the spot. I've got I've got a new telly, so I, I have been watching. I've been watching Miriam Margulies driving around Australia, talking of Australia in her camper van. That's quite mm-hmm. good. Okay, cool. On BBC. Cool. This is very very, very localized uh, TV guide we're doing here. You know that, don't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, but I've, I've, we've been working on new double lens <coughs> music. That's really what we've been doing. I've had a couple of weeks off off teaching, been been working hard on on that stuff. Um, so yeah, there will be an album this year. There wasn't in 2022, but there will be in 2023. For sure. I, I guess in some respects we released the vinyl, did we? Or was that late summer 2021? I'm trying to think. But we released the vinyl for Area. Yeah, Area Era, Era was a while ago. Yeah, that was sure. kind of coming out of pandemic. We, last year we were just you know because we had. I did Witch to LimeWire album. Jay did his kidney on. We've been working. We we um, had the three piece sweet stuff, which is is coming out soon. Um, so yeah, the no time for a donor <laughs> album last year, but there's there will be one soon ish. And a quick reminder to people to check out Witch to LimeWire's upload to me. We've only got one or two tapes left. Yeah. Slept on. Yeah. No, we've we've nearly sold all the tapes, both variants. It's just CDs really that mm-hmm. are kicking around now. So uh, we've got a few of them left. Joe, what have you been up to, mate? Um, swearing at people that have still got their Christmas decks up because <laughs> it's just it's, it's getting very annoying and that's the kind of thing that uh, grinds me down a bit um, attending lifts as you say that's uh, uh, b- booking holidays so we're going to we're going to Latvia in a couple of weeks time treating my sister because she, I think she needs it she's in a bit of a, a dark place so it's time to cheer her up a bit um, apart nice. from that Bit of music, um, less synthesizers, more kind of gritty um, urban sounds. I think. Yeah. Mm. Going going back to the nineties. Yeah, just kind of uh, going back to what I loved. Nice. Yeah, we were talking about this. You've, you've written an article which we're going to put out at some point this month, which is about your kind of journey with music and how. I, I don't want to give too much away, but like that feeling that maybe synthwave was your greatest love affair with music in the sense that you hadn't connected with a genre like that since going back to like Britpop, Oasis, that kind of thing? Definitely. Um, You know, it's basically an article about sort of the timeline of my sort of adult life of the genres that I've loved so dearly and that I've always had something to kind of move on to when I've kind of sort of fallen out of love with a genre. I've had something, I've had the next step there in front of me, but as I sort of have, I guess, dived into synthwave so hard obviously coming out of it it's going to be just as hard but there's nothing there to sort of carry me to the next genre there's nothing new that's come out that's going to grab me by the proverbial so to speak so yeah i'm kind of feeling a bit empty music wise at the moment yeah it's funny isn't it because you kind of the music that you're into can define who you are as a person at at an Mm -hmm. age not not everyone has that relationship with music but i'm sure that anyone listening to this who's who's fallen down a rabbit hole into a niche genre and certainly all of us lot who are directly involved in one way or more in the scene it's like um 
it's very much who you are, isn't it? And uh, mm-hmm. that kind of identity, if you if you fell out of love with it, it just becomes a job then. And I've always had to try really hard because the amount of music that we have to listen to running two labels, it can be challenging at times. And funny, yeah. you should say that. I, I, I have a long commute from dropping off my daughter at her nan's in the morning. And I've had like 45 minutes of pissing down the rain this morning. And I stuck on some like early 1970s French acoustic, like Francoise Hardy. Yeah, nice. So nice. So the <laughs> rain's pouring down. I'm trying yeah. to... Yeah, yeah. trying to maintain some kind of vision on this road and i've got chilled out kind of early 70s acoustic um warbling it's really nice yeah was, was that before or after you went around the roundabout that like you didn't uh, get away the roundabout the afterwards yeah, I, don't know yeah. what was, I don't know what i was playing at. i was uh yeah i was so desperate to ring you uh to chat about that thing about future sounds four which we can't really reveal yet, but I was mm. so excited at the news that I had to call you straight away or did a voice note and I and I and nearly crashed your straight. car. Yeah, I nearly went straight across a roundabout, which really the only exits were left all right. <laughs> it gives me that vision, the shortcut, isn't it? There's that vision. Have you seen that video with the car that hits the the, the, the oh, middle yeah, of the yeah, roundabout? Yeah, 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 yeah. Goes about forty <laughs> foot in the air. Yeah, that wasn't you then. No. Would have been good. Um, so yeah, I don't know if um, you guys have got any kind of talking points. Obviously, the most of the legwork's going to be done on um, the Iverson interview this week. But something that I've stumbled across, thanks to Glenn, um, is AI. We were talking about AI on the phone the other day. We never have a short conversation, me and Glenn. It's always a big, long, detailed chat. But he pointed me in the direction of this software. Like for us, <clears throat> I think we've talked about this before. Like if you go to release an album that's old and maybe the only archetype, uh, the artifact of the artwork that's left is the band cam bar. And it's not big enough uh, or high res enough to enhance to a 12 inch size for the, for the vinyl sleeves. And so those kind of things have to be overcome, whether it's through graphic design or whatever. And Glenn pointed me in the direction of this AI software, which I ran like as a good example, we're thinking of doing, um, well, we are going to do a Whitewoods uh, space, Spaceship Earth. It's the 10th anniversary of it in August. Oh, are you? So we're going to okay. do a special edition of that. And one of the things that frustrated me and probably people noticed is that the artwork on the sleeve originally is quite pixelated because that was all we had. And we had to, we just had to stretch it. And I ran it through this software. I haven't bought the software yet because there are other ways to do it. And I tried the Photoshop ones. And, but I got the best results with this thing called Topaz. And just the crispness that it comes that comes from it and photo enhancement, like that kind of level of AI is really interesting to me, the ability to do that. And I know that AI is quite controversial in some respects, isn't it? You get really divisive debates on Twitter about kind of the impact AI can have on um, gigging artists. Does that make sense? Is that a fair phrase, mm. gigging artists? Do you know what I mean? Like people- yeah, but this is, this is using it as quite a banal tool, right? This is, this is you know, it, it, this is the kind of thing that's going to be like a default function in inside Photoshop within, you know, a year or you it, know, I mean, next, it, next upgrade. It kind like, of is kind of a tick box thing, but it's not as good. Normal, it's not, it? it's yeah. not, it's not as good currently the Photoshop. Yeah. And you're right, it's a completely different yeah. thing. It's It's not something that's going to hopefully has less of an impact on an industry of people who've made their whole profession and stuff of, of doing photography. It's, it's something that like lay people think you can do anyway, right? Like, you know, it's that kind of classic Blade Runner enhance, enhance thing, you know, <laughs> yeah. right? Like be- hey, Siri. people always thought that like, yeah, you know, like oh, God. you see it I on like crime shows and stuff, don't, don't you? Do like hey, zooming Siri, into... My computer's going wild now. Oh, fuck's <laughs> Technology. <laughs> They're taking over. <clears throat> they are. Like anyone who's got a daughter called Alexa now cursing themselves oh yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah it's a shame it's a nice name it isn't is a it? nice but, name yeah i talked to my brother about this because he's got really mixed feelings about it and he's kind of like well you know because the other thing that glenn pointed me in the direction of is this like chat but i think elon musk's uh launched it i think that's what he said and i, I was i was driving so i didn't t- pick up all the details but it's like you can have super detailed conversations you can send them off to write you 500 words on x subject you can discuss coding with them that's how sophisticated these bots are getting and my brother was like well where is this going to end up you know there'll be a point when you can go right write me a piece of music that's four minutes long with a 132 bpm that sounds a bit like this and this and this and it's like well, yeah that already exists it's just not very good no but what yeah, yeah but it's know, yeah, but there'll the, be a tipping point the more we trial it yeah. the more people think there's users mm-hmm. the more they invest in it the better it gets and then what happens so afterwards on the on the music front the, the people who are most vulnerable to that are the people who who write kind of royalty free music kind of jingle type stuff already because you know your job is to write quite 
generic music that has quite a strict function. <laughs> Lo-fi beats, you know, you get study, told, that kind of thing. Background music. Yeah, yeah, you get told to do kind of sounder like stuff. You get uh, advertising, you know, whatever for for an advert or for background on a TV show. It's like we need something that sounds a bit like the White Stripes or whatever. And then you know the 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 composer who does royalty free music, you know, bangs out a, a White Stripes sounder like. Yeah, yeah. That's the kind of thing that can very easily be wiped out done by by AI. Yeah. Um, but the irony is that the- which is a shame because actually you know that's how that's how a lot of like good musicians do that as their kind so of so that they can do their, 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 love, job, right? their, their passion projects yeah. in in their spare time. Yeah, I mean, Eyeliner was working in that field, wasn't he? He was writing kind of kids' music, freelancing when he when he was in Hong Kong. That's my understanding. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I think a lot of people do stuff like that because that you know. Uh, that's the industry that has money, right? Like the the TV industry and the advertising industry. So, you know, there's plenty of, like for example, even Ninja Tune, who are like a you know a really trendy like label with amazing pedigree, I think. But they have a like a, a sync wing, which I think you know like funds the kind of legit of course, music yeah. wing. Um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's you know it's it's a huge industry that that is. Uh, quite jeopardized by this this kind of thing, like the kind of that's ability to make sound alikes. So, uh, to be honest, I'm a bit of a Luddite with this, and I've only sort of seen what you know, people have argued about on Twitter. Is this like the next yeah, sort of Spotify in that for a, for a while everyone was like, oh, no one's going to want to not own a piece of music or not be able to actually download it and have an MP3. It will never catch on. Is this like the new easy way of doing art? But, itself, yeah. but it might be a bit like what Tom's saying there. So imagine you're a YouTuber and you've got content coming out of your arse, you've got to do videos about football. Yep. So you're a football common, uh, you're a commenter for on football matters and you need background music. You could just literally have a subscription service. You don't have to, you know, no one is there for clearing for you to get permission to share their music and bring them to a bigger audience. You know, it kind of could right. have an impact in that regard if you literally just click a button and say, right, I want something that sounds a little bit like Paul uh, Van Dyke. Is it Paul Van Dyke? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And and if you can just click a button and you've got a subscription that can give you royalty free versions of that, then it would wipe out the gigging musicians who write this yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I can't wow, see okay. people. I mean, can you imagine someone going, right, um, I'm not going to get my turntable. I'm not going to get my Led Zeppelin album out. What I'm going to do is be far easier for me to click a button on my laptop and play me something that sounds like Led Zeppelin mixed with The Who. Like, I just... Yeah, they're called Greta Van Fleet. <laughs> yeah. It exists. Okay, all right. There we are. Bad example. But I mean, can you see people's <laughs> music tastes, like people being interested in, in doing that as a matter of course? I, I can't, personally. I really hope people no, will see but, but sense. Professionally, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I, sure. I did toy with the idea of writing a Future Sounds article that was just AI written. I would, I'd like to see, I'd like to see if there's a piece of software that's good enough to write because we're shit. So I'm sure there is. <laughs> <laughs> there was one that I and I forget the name of it now, but there's there's one a friend of mine had pointed me in, in the direction of, and it, um, it essentially you could ask it anything and it would come up with facts and information, but also you could ask it to write a certain thing and it would bring that up. And the example I think we were saying about it just before we hit record is that he asked it to say write a synopsis for the sequel for Point Break. Um, and it did. And then he asked it again later, and it did a completely different synopsis. So it doesn't just repeat itself. It, you know, through, through a bit of testing, you could see that it was able to come up with different ideas, different things, but it was very accurate. It had all the, you know, the characters' names were, you know, were um, consistent, etc. So I, I did talk with the idea of trying to think of a, an interesting subject or maybe a, an uninteresting subject and write, write an article, but put it just AI output and me asking questions of it. I'm quite into that. Like, um, you know, um, if you think back to like what Brian Eno was doing with his um, oblique strategy cards when he was working with Talking Heads and stuff back in the day, it's like you kind of take these initial prompts uh, like away from from the musician's control, you have like a kind of arbitrary initial prompt that comes from from somewhere, comes from the ether, and then you present it to humans to interpret. You know, like he his cards would say, you know, very strange things. You know, it'd be like uh, play in the form of an orange or whatever. You know, it's just like a kind of random prompt that that you that you hand over to David Byrne and the rest, and then and then they interpret that. I think maybe. I don't know, maybe using AI as like a kind of starting point for things, working with it use, and using it to do kind of banal kind of functions like you were saying, Enzo. I think, I think there's, there's an opportunity for humans to work with this mm. tech for I sure. I mean, the idea... As well as it being something to, to, to slightly uh, 
fear is strong yeah word. I don't know. no i to, think to so i think kind, fear of, is kind of, well. of or suspicion maybe is better i mean the the uh, the romantics view to technology is that it it can be developed to a point where it removes the need for humans to do laborious difficult tasks but the you know it, it it's kind of like when you see an industry upgrade its way of manufacturing and then you have the human cost of that is jobs. Mm-hmm. So like you have industries mm-hmm. that very, very firmly and rightly in some respects resist change to the working practices because they know that the knock on effect might be profit for the shareholders, but it's also 10 jobs gone because those are people who had to perform those roles themselves. And because technology can, it doesn't mean it necessarily should always. There's always a fine line with that, isn't there? But I mean, the art thing was interesting because you had a lot of kind of big rows on Twitter recently about people using AI art to generate artwork for their music projects. And in some respects, I could see both sides of the argument. I probably feel like naturally I sit on the side of the artists. I'm kind of interested Mm. in exploring the AI thing. But a good example of where it's been done well is like DMTFL. They've got, uh, Vito's got a whole project of um, AI generated art. And also Yate's most recent album. That to me, I'm pretty sure is is AI art. Yeah, they do. And and the kind of, I've I've played around with some, with with Dali before and Tom, I know you have. And it's like, you still have to, There is some creativity to getting good results from it. Yeah, there's decision making as well because some of the stuff it suggests is shit, and you, you, even you going, I don't like that, I don't like that, I like that. That's that's that. Even that's like human input into the process, and you and you you came up with the prompt to start with it. You know, it's not totally doing it by itself, right? You're 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 starting it off yeah. and finishing it off. It just does the the kind of middle point. <laughs> I was going to ask what the extent is to where how people feel that they can own or to Tom's point there about how much you feel that you've inputted into it because I've seen people put things online and saying I'll check out this artwork that this AI artwork that I've done and sort of owning it and saying this is mine and then when I, when people much like myself would think well actually you've just typed in a few prompts potentially you might have done a bit more than that there may have been some back and forth with it a bit more i wonder the extent to which someone can feel proud of an ai project that they've inputted some I words guess it into depends how many how many hundreds of times they've prompted to get the result that they eventually yeah. wanted you don't necessarily get to see whereas with no, an artist, that's true. you can see you can see the phases of construction of a piece of work if they send in new drafts when you're working with them but mm. you probably don't see that process when you, someone just sends the final result mm. Keith Rankin was uh, like put some artwork up on Twitter the other day, which was, was um, originated from an AI prompt, and then he, you know, digitally retouched it afterwards and corrected some of the more egregious errors. You know, I think it's a it's a hand in hand thing. It's a, it could you know I I think there's a world in which this is there's a world in which this is something that's terrifying, and there's a world in which this is something very very banal that we just kind of you know get to perform mundane tasks and and we do the kind of exciting bits. You know, it could be a hand in hand thing. That's the utopian way of looking at it. It sounds to me like another thing that we can't even begin to fully comprehend and suddenly in 10 years' time we'll realise it's absolutely everywhere Mm -hmm. and everything... So so more has been taken away from us, more creativity, more ownership, and suddenly we realise... Well, we got diddly squat out of it, and it all just sort of well, it's going to it's going to pass me by, that's for sure, because I really, (laughs) hopefully, I'll never be involved. Well, you we kind of got we kind of got pushed into digital um, uh, consumption of music, and there's a massive kickback into vinyl and people wanting to own analog Mm, things. And so I wonder if maybe the more that AI proliferates, the more people enjoy the experience of looking at organic art. You know, organic's not the right word because people are working brilliantly with digital. But, you know, like the process that we would go through working with someone like Zero, who did the artwork for, in, uh, not Innocence, for Weekend Rush, our new album as Three Piece Suites. It's like we had a vision, we gave him an idea, and he came back with stuff. And it's just like the most rewarding feeling seeing someone who is much more capable than you put, mm-hmm. putting into like making it real and Mm -hmm. and and making it stand out and in a way that ai could never do you could look at it and go that's really cool and i'm quite happy for that to stand as a badge for this album but you wouldn't get the same feeling like when we've worked with vanitas he's done some amazing pieces of art for us like the rework of um the vaporwave for china artwork that he did absolutely stunning the late night delight stuff you know i'm sure everyone has that feeling and we'd never stop working with artists but i do think it's an interesting some of the magic's the weight right like the time (laughs) yeah you know you 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 commission something got two pieces i'm waiting on right now that are really exciting to me yeah 
Yeah, and it, you know, and 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 the the wait for it to come in the post, it's like a dopamine hit when it does come. It's like people are addicted to shopping, right? It's like like more than half of it is just like waiting for the parcel to arrive and then open it up. Like actually owning the object is only a small part of the equation. And then just hanging it up and not wearing it. That's it. Yeah, or sending That's it back. It. Send yeah. it back. That's what Katie did. The amount she buys from ASOS, I think, uh, yeah, that might be mm-hmm. that might be exactly what she's looking for. She seems to buy about <laughs> ten things, and every time I go to the post office, it's like, can you take this back for me? Maybe we're sidetracking here a little bit. I don't know. Any more thoughts on AI before we um, move on from that? I fear it slightly. Kind of, don't know. (laughs) Yeah. I'd say the tip to take from this conversation is 2034, buy a million paintbrushes because they're going to come back. People are going to be doing their art. That's the Martin Lewis money-saving tip from this podcast. I like it. That's good. That's good. Ad break. Yeah. <laughs> right, so um, well, we normally do, Joe. You're Obviously, this is the first time you've been on the show. We normally ask people what they've been listening to. So share your exciting music find for the world, please, Joe. Well, discover this a uh, couple of months ago via Spotify Discovery. Um, some people will hiss at that, but, you know, that's just the way I do things. Uh, <laughs> but it's Bats in the Woods by Johnny Dynamite and the Bloodsuckers. Uh, it's from 2021. Um, and it's off an album called Sleeveless. And uh, just, again, it's just an opinion thing. I think it's a cooler sleeveless denim jacket than Ryan Gosling's Scorpion jacket in Drive. That's all I'm saying. It's much, much cooler. But the track itself has got no synthesizers, just a couple of guitars, a sweet bass, uh, cracking lyrics, good harmony. It's just a very cool 80s sounding track. Uh, it, it's like sometimes you discover something, you think, you know, flipping, like, I thought I knew the 80s, you know, I thought I knew everything, and you, you assume it's an 80s track. And when you find out it's not, you kind of have, have an even bigger love affair with it because, of course, it's music you discovered in your lifetime that wasn't made prior to your lifetime. So, yeah, yeah really, really good track. Uh, yeah, Johnny Dynamite and the Bloodsuckers, Bats in the Woods.
Lovely stuff. That's quite relevant to you know the, the our interview. You know, Josh, Josh, and Johnny go on to yeah. talk quite a lot about exploring sort of different aspects of the eighties, yeah. which are maybe underexplored by synthwave producers and like eighties rock and eighties well, indie, eighties yeah. kind of synth funk stuff is 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 what they're interested in. Yeah, yeah. Above and beyond some of the kind of more familiar touchstones. So yeah, Perfect. well, they're, they're, they're very relevant. Very, they're, I'll say, psychedelic furs is probably the closest band I would I would put them to. To if that who, helps. To who? To Johnny, uh, to, to Johnny Dynamite and the Bloodsuckers in terms uh, of like yeah, their, their sound I would say Johnny probably psychedelic first Johnny and the Bat Dogs <laughs> <laughs> is that what you said? That shows, how much, that shows how much I listen I actually listened to the track today and I did really like it as well it also oh, gave me um, what's the guy's name White Wedding who, d- who did that oh Billy Idol. Idol yeah so that kind of that, that kind of yeah, era yeah, yeah, era of so. guitar work if you know what I mean yeah and he's got the he- it's got the I don't know if you watched the music video but the uh, mullet I think he's uh, like to match the mullet. jacket as well he's got a cracking mullet yeah, not one of those Australian yeah. ones but you know like a, a, a legit one not not a larrikin mullet no <laughs> no, no. Um, yeah and the, and the point you said about Iverson I think is is really valid as well because if you take out their first album, Arcade, and those kind of singles that built up uh, their kind of brand in the first instance, they, they've 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 long stopped being what you might call just generic and out uh, outrun with 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 mm-hmm. audio with vocals Definitely. on there. You know, they kind of yeah. they've moved on. They've explored stuff. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of exploration in the last album like my my girlfriend always tells me that the the one track sounds like the Maccabees we'll we'll be moving into the interview quite shortly but it's quite interesting to hear how the dynamic might change with the addition of new members so we won't touch on that too much now but you being one of them and and more live instrumentation and stuff so Mm -hmm. it's it's really cool to hear Patrick what have you been listening to mate? Um, So we spoke about this off the off the pod but most of the people who uh, listen to this or some that might not be were aware that I wrote uh, wrote an article before Christmas about Synthwave and where I think it is and what's going on with it and in- inevitably I end up getting a bit of a mixed response actually this time around compared to my usual moans um, was very positive and people being um, not necessarily 100% in agreement but understanding where I was coming from there was some good discussion I had a really good chat with Diamond Field off the back of it a little while ago anyway digressing but from there, much like yourself, uh, Enzo, I then actually ironically listen to a little bit more synthwave than I normally would do. And whereas it was quite easy to be able to kind of find something new, because there is a lot of new synthwave out there, um, I, for this week, went back and listened to some stuff that I hadn't listened to for quite some time. And one of the bands, who actually haven't released anything for quite a while, apart from a single, uh, a band from Finland called Nightstop, um, I think and they did electronic purification records released their record on vinyl that's right they did, they, they, they're on EPR and the the album which this track's going to be from is Dancing Killer which was sort of the third big album that they that they did have but they'd also released Streetwalker and Return to Synth City prior <coughs> to that as well as some other EPs um, they did actually do a live show in London for I think what was the second Retro Future Fest but to be honest, um, with the exception of a few things here and there, they did a track with Shorty P. Um, they've been quite quiet, but the track I was picking is from 2017 uh, album Dancing Killer, and it is the track uh, Dancing Killer, uh, which is second on the album. It's kind of, um, how would I describe it? It's like erotic synthwave. Let me put it that way. It's quite. Ooh, it's quite. Not enough of that. Yeah, it's not enough of that. You know. Sexy. <laughs> it's quite. It is quite sexy. I think the, the way that it is. It's. Um, I'll tell you what. I think people should just listen to it, and then we'll talk about it after. They, yeah. they could decide for themselves. Um, so yeah, this is Night Stop with Dancing Killer. You can do a lot in four minutes. Mm-hmm. Twice. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 
that is a solid album, by the way. You, really you introduced me to that when I came around yours. Really That's like right. that. Erotic Talk Encounter, that track is really, really good. Yeah. Love that. Ding, 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 ding. It's a great album. Mm-hmm. And the vinyl's beautiful. It's like a pink and white. It is. Oh, oh, when, when you were holding it, I was imagining you naked, and it was just <laughs> yeah. perfection. It's just yes. so pink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Can I change the subject slightly? I no. want to come back to yeah, the article. Yeah, please do. I'm going to come back to the article that you wrote because, um, mm. yeah, I, I would say because you, you kind of you kind of approached the subject of synthwave and its health via Twitter, which I would say was a stupid uh, medium to choose, being your friend and being oh, honest. Harsh. Because we live and learn. Because because I don't think that Twitter gives you enough character length uh, to form. Well, soon. Well, yeah, exactly. But it, it didn't give you enough room to be nuanced and expand upon your thoughts. And so it gears people up to respond to the first tweet, not read a thread, get very angry, and people aren't able to communicate properly what they think. And I think when you did that article, you did a much better job of providing the case for your love for it as much as your fears for it and hopes for it. So I think that what came out in that article was much more nuanced. And I've been having quite a similar relationship with Synthwave because the saturation is real when you listen to so much as we do doing our day job running a label. And, you know, the stuff that I pick to release or the people that we work with, I absolutely love it. And I spend a lot of time listening to it. But it doesn't leave you with much space when you then leave the office to want to go and explore other stuff that you're not directly Mm. working with. And so I had kind of felt like I might be falling out of love. And it's very ironic that reading that article kind of working with you at the last minute to make sure that the tone was right and we were happy with how we kind of pitched it to people to make Absolutely. sure that we got that, the debate that we got which was yeah. pretty constructive definitely I, 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 I was very uh, it was very important to me that we did that so that yeah. it wasn't being thrown out there for the usual naysayers to go oh, he's moaning again so you know yeah we took some time on that yeah and it was it was good it was a great piece and my own personal reaction to it having thought all of, you know I thought about every line in it and we discussed it all at great length before and then I read all the comments that people posted and I found myself listening to more synthwave than I had in months and months mm. and months mm. I ended up discovering um, CJ Burnett's album which was my pick for album of the year mm. um, I've you know, I, I've been digging back into old stuff, but also into new stuff as well. And I actually started working on my first synthwave track for a couple of years. I'd had a couple of ideas that had been sort of left discarded. And I haven't worked on anything other than Vaporwave in recent years. And kind of within 48 hours, I'd found four or five new albums I wanted to listen to, one or two I want to release, and started writing my own music. So it's kind of reinvigorated my love for it. And hopefully one or two people, if, if even one or two people had that reaction to it, uh, for whatever motivation, I think then it's it's done its job, and um, yeah, it was a cracking piece. And I hopefully, have more like it in the future. Joe's rela- Joe's Joe's article about his relationship with synthwave is really good as well. Thank you for just adding that in because you felt you had to. <laughs> I, I, I like that. Thank that, you very like, much. When I when I I'm crate, tr- crate training my dog at the moment, and he really hates it, and he gets really sad, and so I like when he comes out, he looks at me in the way that you were looking at me then, and I give him a treat. <laughs> <laughs> well I, I've actually I'll, I'll speak to you about it off air but I've got an idea for my next article actually cool. and there was me there was me thinking that I probably wouldn't actually have many ideas but I've actually I think I've got a, a, a doozy so uh, nice. what's this we're all, space we're all heading on the same path so yeah I'm going to I'm going to throw my pick in because we're still talking about synthwave before I go to Tom's then if that's alright and um, I might be talking about synthwave if you don't know alright well, I doubt it. But. <laughs> I've got no, no, no. I've got, I've got one basic bitch uh, opinion on on synth throw in to throw in, which on. is that I was, I was teaching a, a kid uh, drums today, and they wanted to learn "Blinding Lights" by the weekend, um, and I haven't heard it for a while. And it is the production is very freaking fantastic. Yeah. It is really good. Yeah, it's got like it's. I mean, obviously oversaturated. It's the most streamed song of all time on Spotify. Apparently, is it really? Um, oh. Sounds yeah. about right. Yeah. Do you know what the most streamed video um, on YouTube of all time is? Is it that um, Gangnam Style? Uh, is it Raw by Katy Perry? No, it's none of those things. It's Baby Shark. Oh, 16 oh, billion yeah. views. My daughter's obsessed with it. She keeps just looking at me in the morning going, Daddy Most of Shark. Them are her. Yeah, I know, yeah. Here's, here's a quick segue for you. So, Hang on, sorry, I think I... Tom was still talking about the weekend. No, it's about Baby no, no, Shark. I'm, I'm done. It's, it's, it's good. <laughs> it's yeah. about Baby Shark. So, right. when I was a ski instructor in Japan briefly, every week when I used to 
do ski lessons in the kids club when we were doing out the awards we'd have to do the baby shark song in front of like hundreds of parents I and i used to have to be up on stage which i can see it, it basically <laughs> felt like that it honestly felt like that but the, these yeah. these we parents were extremely kids? rich <laughs> <laughs> well, they, well, no, but they, they sure. couldn't understand it because they were from Japan, Hong Kong, Taiwan. They, they, yeah, yeah, I just yeah. did the dance. I was just some weird six foot two guy dancing with them. All right, get the height in there. All right, <laughs> yeah, odd, oddly yeah. creepy, oddly creepy. But there you go. Sorry, let's let's back to synthwave. Yeah, back to five foot eleven me. <laughs> Alex, <laughs> yeah, five ten and a half. I think there was a pause after that because <laughs> yeah, no, it was, cause it was a lie. Like, press X uh, for doubt. <laughs> 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 Not very good at lying. I'm really X, bad X, at lying. X, X, X. It's like the other day I came home and um, oh, this is really bad. Actually, I don't know why I'm doing this on podcast. The chance of Katie listening to this are very slim, so I'm going to throw it in. <laughs> I, uh, Poppy went down for a nap in the afternoon, so I sometimes go outside to my little man shed here, my little studio, and I had a smoke. And then I left the backy. My missus don't know I smoke for some reason. Like, I don't know why. And then I put the backy on the bin and I thought, I should probably pack that up now and put it in my... And I was like, I'll do it in a little while. Anyway, we had a row on the way home for whatever reason. Come back in and she's like, whose backy is this? And I was like, uh, it's Jerome's. It's my brother. (laughs) (laughs) She's like, I don't know what's worse, going out with a smoker or a liar. (laughs) And I made, I, I made it worse. I made it worse because I said you're going out with both. <laughs> oh, no. It's really bad. Anyway, my pick. My pick for the week. We digress. My pick for the week. Um, absolute classic. I could have gone with a load of things uh, that I've been listening to lately. I named a couple of them a minute ago. But this is like 2011. This is peak, peak early days of, of OutRun. Uh, Mitch Murder, one of the most talented uh electronic producers Maybe. in my opinion never mind synthwave producers just don't ask him about Kung Fury um, <laughs> he's had enough of that um, one of his albums that probably resonated with me the most when I was first discovering kind of going back looking backwards when I when, you know when I first discovered synthwave was current events it's just absolutely sublime and uh, the track I'm going to pick from it is called In The News Let me share with you a vision of the future which offers hope. It is that we embark on a program to counter the awesome Soviet missile threat with measures that are defensive. Let us turn to the very strengths in technology that spawned our great industrial base and that have given us the quality of life we enjoy today. What if free people could live secure in the knowledge that their security did not rest upon the threat of instant U.S. retaliation to deter a Soviet attack, that we could intercept and destroy strategic ballistic missiles before they reached our own soil or that of our allies. I know this is a formidable technical task, one that may not be accomplished. Victor Technologies, the high-flying hardware computer company which took a nosedive this year may be bought out by the British firm Applied Computer Technologies. Piloting the space shuttle is very difficult to do. One would think, can a, 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 a kid or a normal person actually pull this off? Well, what I did when I designed this was I, I understood that problem. Uh, it seems the sweep of technology has no limits. In San Francisco this week, the world's first robot bartender was unveiled. The robot can talk, can take spoken orders, and can mix 200 different drinks. But on the first test run, the robot knocked a glass off the bar and onto the floor and poured beer all over the counter. The robot's designer says there were still some bugs to be worked out.
us nuclear weapons, to turn their great talents now to the cause of mankind and world peace, to give us the means of rendering these nuclear weapons impotent and obsolete. Tonight, consistent with our obligations under the ABM Treaty, recognizing the need for closer consultation with our allies, I'm taking an important first step. Instant U.S. retaliation, n -n nuclear war, nuclear war. stare and wonder at the latest facet of life overtaken by the computer age, the department store. But while the Cebu store is proud of its technology, it is worried that customers will feel it has lost the human touch. That was Mitch Murder in the news. Um, one of the you've been picking up everybody else's articles, Enzo, but you uh, oh, neglected to go. mention mm. the the review that I wrote at short notice yeah, for no, um, you did, yeah. the the Sat Satellite Young album that uh, you put out recently on um, Time Slave, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, not MPF on Time Slave. Um, I really, really like that record, and yeah, the 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 track with with Mitch Murder is an absolute banger as well. Like. Yeah. Obviously, you know, um, I'm the kind of uh, least synthwave informed person on this podcast, but um, I'm a massive fan of uh, what Mitch Murder does. And, you know, I actually uh, the interview I did with um, OSC uh, way back in season one uh, turned me on to Mitch Murder. It was, it was somebody that I'd kind of overlooked. And, um, you know, I've been going back over what he does. And I think you'd very, very talented. I feel, I feel like you'd like the Salary Man Simulator series. There's like three short EPs. They're like, they're only about yeah. 10 minutes each. Um, and they really, there's that kind of Wii uh, soundtrack music, if you get where I'm coming from. Yeah, up my alley. Yeah, yeah exactly. Sure. It's really good. I'd recommend anyone who, um, anyone who's interested in uh, Mitch Murder and a kind of crossover into Office Wave, that kind of yeah. sound. It's, it's a really, really enjoyable, really enjoyable listen. So what's your pick anyway, Tom? Sorry. I um, And it is a great article. Go and check it out. Future hyphen sounds. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm not that precious about it. <laughs> yeah. What a um, dig! What a yeah, dig! Yeah, I mean, it, look, <laughs> well, <laughs> it's fine. Um, like, obviously, it's it's a bit of a quiet time for releases. You know, it's it's um, this kind of festive period, and uh, things are only just kind of beginning to warm up. But something that did come out right at the start of the year, which I thought was fantastic, is a record by an artist called Meta Room. Um, uh, the record's called Oxidized Archive. I think it's kind of a compilation thing. And actually looking at the artwork, it looks like there's an element of AI going into that artwork as well. There's these kind of Audi logos slash Olympic rings that look that have that kind of telltale AI haze to it. Um, but yeah, that, that kind of sums up the music quite well because it's this kind of glitchy, sound designy sort of... Uh, I doubt they would call it this, but it definitely relates to, to what we would call Vapor Trap, like this kind of Vapor or Blank Banshee style almost sounds like you're kind of scrolling through your sound effects what's this a football update yeah Southampton 2 <laughs> oh Man God. City nil. <coughs> Glenn will be that's huge Break, breaking news breaking <laughs> sorry news. sorry I shouldn't have <clears throat> that, disrupted I, but keep going that's, that is fine that, that will mean very little to, to Meta Room if they're tuning in from uh, Los Angeles for the, <laughs> the Southampton versus Man City there's plenty City of time for scorelines to change as well to be honest <laughs> we did this we did this with the uh, World our, Cup our last episode was like that yeah. wasn't it yeah yeah it was uh, Germany South Korea or something Japan but anyway um um yeah, uh, uh, the track that I'm choosing is called uh, 118 Voices. It's one of the shorter tracks on the album and it has this, you know, amazing kind of scrolling through the sound effects kind of sound design, very hyperactive, very glitchy. Um, the beats that come in have this nice kind of drum and bass jungle kind of um, hint. There are similarities with artists and I've seen like Blank Banshee and, and like Keith Rankin and like NREL for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think there's something in the water over in Los Angeles because, you know, that that's where a lot of these these artists seem to come from, like this kind of L.A. beat scene, incredibly broken up, very, very clever stuff. Um, 
I think I suspect they're quite young. It's I'm, I'm a bit old for it. The the titles are all either in lower all lowercase or all capitals, <laughs> which I think is a telltale Gen Z sign. I don't know. Um, Waterfront Dining does that. I'm into it. Waterfront Dining does all of his albums and his track names are lowercase. Times New Roman. Fair enough. But I put full stops at the end of all of mine. <laughs> Old man. <laughs> I don't. But anyway, 118 Voices, really, really cool track. Really cool album. It's, uh, the album's called Oxidized Archive. I think it's um, self-released. Really clever stuff. I like it a lot. <laughs> A couple of shows coming up in the next month or so in London, uh, one of which is on the 4th of February. That's at Folklore, which is where we did Future Sounds 2 Double Vision. Um, and that's been put on by our friends with Allo City Records. They're doing a Barber Beats night. And I think, on memory, I haven't got the poster to hand, but I think they've got Macro Blank, uh, Oscarb. Um, anyone else on the, on the lineup there? Trying to recall. There's a question mark over one of the artists for sort of visa okay. reasons, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, that's right. Mm. Yeah, that's that's probably that's probably what it was. But yeah, um, anyone who yeah. came along to our show, Double Vision, will know what a vibey venue folklore is, and um, that's definitely yeah. worth. Um, well, in fact, I think it's sold out. But if you've got tickets, we're we're going to be along there with a merch table. Hopefully. Has it sold and, out uh, now already? I don't worry. I think we can we can sort you out, mate. Don't worry. I should we'll have taken that, but I'll, I'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Yeah, you're gonna have to sell a few T-shirts, I think. Yeah, <sighs> something like that. Be put to work. Yeah, 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 we'll, 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 well, to be fair, new. he came with a couple of staff members for his table, so we can do the same. That'd True. be fine, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. yeah, but shouts to them. Done a brilliant job selling out those tickets. Obviously, having someone as big as Macro Blank, who's um, hugely lighting up the Barber Beats scene at the minute, it's really exciting. And oscar has been around for a very long time as well. I'm sure he's carrying a crowd with him too. Uh, you've got a show supported well for Iverson supporting wolf yeah. club i'm sure you guys talk about it in the interview yeah. but i can't remember if you give any specifics so do you yeah plug for it? sure but um they save it to the end so I, sh I should get a plug in before as well um so yeah um iverson are supporting wolf club uh the gigs at the black heart in camden and it's happening on saturday the 18th of february um i think there's still tickets left so um yeah get some tickets and come on down to that cool well, let's move on to the meat of the episode. Then we've got a fantastic interview with uh, synth pop, uh, synth wave. I don't really know how to describe them. Iverson, absolute legends, incredibly talented lads. Um, Josh and Johnny are cool personal friends. Uh, they're hugely talented. It's it's great to have um, you involved in the band, Tom, and obviously Max and, and Jay as well. And I think it was just the three of you, though, for this, wasn't it? So, um, yeah. yeah, we'll uh, kick off with that. Future sounds. Future sounds. Future sounds. Hello, future folks. You're here with Tom, Josh, and Johnny on Future Sounds. 
Radio. FM. FM. Oh, FM. <laughs> All right, I'm here with uh, Iverson boys, Josh and Johnny. Hey, Daddy. Hello. <laughs> We're recording this in a sort of uh, post-Christmas festive fog. Um, Josh is still going on the candy canes, the peppermint canes. <laughs> Sucking on it like a... Like a God, I'm going to have to do so yeah. much editing. <laughs> uh, Johnny, Go what have you got? you got Sucking some squash. on it like what? I've, um, you got some diluting juice. Yeah, the squash is good for me. And you're drinking draft Guinness out of the can. With Ooh. a fries Turkish delight. Oi. Which we sort of dissembled from some sort of uh, sleigh concoction, wasn't it? It was a, a sleigh assembled it from... It was very well made. Yeah. From uh, off-licence off chocolates kind of glued together in the shape of a Santa sleigh. Who, who made it? It's a midnight store special, I think. Oh, yeah. wow. Exclusive. Exclusive. Yeah, Exclusive. for card holders only. I'm getting this down to a, to a nice good spike. For viewers that, uh, I mean, listeners that can't see what Josh is doing, he's currently sucking on a candy cane until it gets really, really sharp. <laughs> I don't know what he's going to do with it. Candy shank. Can, yeah. <laughs> candy That's shoot. how I always feel like why they probably aren't allowed candy canes in prison. Yeah. Shank, 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 shank. Yeah. That was the sound of the Guinness can being opened by our host. Um, There's added nitrogen in those cans. Yeah. I think that's the best part. It's, it tastes nicer than carbon dioxide. Have you ever opened a bag of crisps? Yeah. That also has nitrogen. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know all... that the planet is mainly nitrogen? I thought it was it's oxygen. oxygen no, too, much, too much of that's bad for you. Really? Well, too much oxygen. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah, it is. Everything yeah. in moderation. Yeah, even love. I think uh, Hall & Oates put it perfectly. Um... It's a lot, a lot, like oxygen. Too much will make you high. Not a lot will make you die. <laughs> Haven't you ever heard that? I don't think I've heard that. Grounds, one. grounds for separation off of the Silver album. Groundskeeper Willie, <laughs> I'll get you. <gasps> that was one of my worst impressions ever. <gasps> it was captured for pro- uh, posterity on air. Um, for people who don't know the Iverson backstory, can you fill us in? Go for it. Okay, so um, to give you the long director's cut, I'll do it. Um, So when I was um, at uni, I was studying music. And um, throughout the three years, I really hadn't landed on any particular genre. I was doing all bits and bobs, really, um, dipping my toes into everything. Um, But then when the kind of final year came round, I had to uh, cough up something that had... um, some continuity in it um and so i um just just complete happenstance uh, me and my housemate um ended up doing a video project that had a synth wave vibe to it it was like a parody of drive but because we didn't have cars we um just kind of used bikes so we called it ride um and then so i wrote drive ride um to go along to this crappy little Instagram video. So Drive Ride was originally just like a kind of 60 second loop that I en- ended up kind of doubling over, writing a kind of verse chorus structure around. And then there we had a song. Um, and then I thought, okay, I could let's see if I can build on this. So I wrote another track and I was quite happy with it because I was like, ah, oh, there's some continuity here. They're both uh, synth wavy. And that second one was Metline Blues. Um, two years before this, I'd just si- I signed with a development label based in uh, around Wood Green, Palmer's Green area. And um, what I'd- they heard of yours um, to want you on that label? What were you doing? Uh, I bas- basically my um, one of my um, one of my um, course mates, um, Ramel, um, kind of. I can't remember how he met uh, the label head. I'm going to leave names out of it just because um, I'm not sure whether I'm truly out of my contract yet. So it's probably <laughs> good to... I've got one of those as well. Keep it really <laughs> quiet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, so so um, my classmate, Ramel, was in touch with them because he lived in um, Enfield and in like the North London area. Um, and he passed on my details, showed me... Um, showed her my uh, my music and soon enough I was 
chatting with her and um we got signed on for like five years or something anyway but what kind of what style was it uh they, they, they it was it was i don't know it almost felt like a bit of a um front to kind of uh, nick arts council money um <laughs> nice it's a good scam i'm, I'm not like this is allegedly i'm i'm, I'm actually can you edit that bit out because i re- that's no, make it louder make the it thing louder. is is that thing is that, that, reverb on that. Yeah, the thing is, is that the people people at the label were nothing but nice to me i mean without them i wouldn't have had a complete like um I had a complete kind of uh, studio refurb as far as all my kit mm-hmm. and equipment, and that was with the all, advance. Well, uh, if I asked for something, they bought it for me. So wow. I guess, I guess but you were like a sugar daddy. No, it's the opposite. Sugar baby, sugar baby. Sugar baby. But anyway, um, yeah. So <laughs> can I keep so, some of this in? I'll edit the. Yeah, the, yeah of the, course, the, of yeah, course. It's, it's quite good. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, they 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 kind of kept me in new studio gear and just gave me the the like room to to experiment. So through my years, like I said before, didn't land on any particular thing. I even tried. I wasn't rapping, but I was trying to produce hip hop. At one point, it was a dark couple of months. Um, <laughs> anyway, so so fast forward to um, finishing. I bet you honed your production chops. Making beats, though? Not really. I like, quite quite honestly, my, my production shops really improved after I left uni when I actually had a project mm-hmm. that was bigger than uni to, to concentrate on. And lo and behold, that, that, that's what Iverson became. Um, so so when, I, when I approached them with these two songs, I was like, hey, um, I've got two singles um, and I've got two B-sides for them. Um, how about, uh, could we release them on streaming, please? Um, they completely biffed it up, completely biff. completely like just got everything wrong. They had the the wrong artwork. I think mm. I think you'll notice still on on like our Spotify account yeah. there are there's like the original um, singles or the first single has like a completely wrong cover compared to what I originally designed for it. Um, How did that happen? Uh, I can't say names again, but oh. who? Um, Someone Christian. Um, Christian fucked it up. Oh, okay. It's mad that can happen, right? Because it's like, what's a label even do in the two thousands, whatever this was, late to twenty tens? Because you know, this is all stuff that you can do yourself, right? And yeah, no, I mean, the labels it was... supposed to go above and beyond, and they're actually it sounded like they're providing less of a service. It was nice to have someone do all the tune core for you instead of having to do it yourself. But much like making a. Um, making a website with our sponsor Squarespace. Um, no, I'm joking. We don't have a sponsor yet, but it probably will be Squarespace or um, Athletic Greens. Yes. Sponsor us, please. <laughs> uh, me undies. Um, but yeah, no, um, <clears throat> they weren't. They weren't particularly that helpful um, when it came to releasing this. Um, but they were like, oh, before we release it, can we have our um, in-house producer have a look? And I, that, that, was a, that was a new thing. I didn't know that there was an in-house producer every Were time. Were you sceptical? I, I was very, very sceptical because I'm, 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 uh, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a princess I, and, and I don't like people fucking with, with, with what mm-hmm. I'm doing. So I was like, well, yeah, if you want, you, the, the in-house producer can have a look at it, but yeah. um, I get final say. Otherwise, it's not going out and not putting my name on something I'm not, not happy with. Is that the dynamic still? No. Oh, yeah. So, so basically, spoiler that, alert is me. Yeah, the in-house producer was Johnny. Um, and I remember uh, whether it was just on Facebook Messenger because I asked for his details. I wanted to kind of get get him on the level, know that he knew what he was doing, and he had previously had some writing credits or some remix credits on on a couple synthwave tracks. So I kind of felt like he he did he did have a decent idea of what the scene was and I mean especially with the first with that first EP we were really trying to kind of um you know ingratiate ourselves into the synthwave community so um but you were yeah, actually was, listening, right? It wasn't opportunistic. Um I was I was me me and my housemates kind of had a vague interest in kind of synthwave and fake 80s music i mean i've mm-hmm. always liked pop music from the 80s yeah. i mean my my kind of um true true kind of like immersion into the scene 
quite on it honestly didn't come until I was like okay well if 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 we're going to try and write this stuff I I might as well kind of get familiarize myself with the rest of the scene and okay. that's you know so you wanted to write 80s music but you weren't necessarily listening to other people who were making 80s music you were listening to 80s music yeah i mean the 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 bit the the small bits of kind of uh, um like exposure before really kind of throwing myself and well i guess ourselves in was maybe like Carpenter Brute album, mm-hmm. like the Drive soundtrack, all the all the usual kind of suspects as far as kind of what draws you to um, the scene. Um, and what also, about you, Johnny? Was what were your credits? Uh, so I did a remix of Nina, My Mistake. Yeah, um, I heard it on the on the on the old television box, and I, I thought, oh, it's quite a cool song. Found it. Uh, Where what in what context was this on the television? It box? was it was on a, a like a BMW advert or something. Mercedes. A Mercedes, yeah, yeah, Mercedes. So I heard the track. I was like, oh, I like that. And then um, I just put a dance uh, beat over the top. Mm-hmm. Uh, it got played on Radio One a couple times. Yeah. So it was then, like a bootleg, like an yeah, official bootleg. remix. Yeah, yeah, bootleg. Um, it's funny when on BBC radios when they like their stations when they play like really naughty, uncleared stuff. Yeah. There's yeah. so much bait stuff. It's the same with Spotify. Everybody's so worried about sampled stuff on Spotify, and there's like the most Yo, like outrageous. I feel like overt stuff out there. There's so much sampling and so much mm-hmm. like of clear like plagiarism and whatnot. But I mean, uh, you, you, if you're earning money from it, then you're you're in mm-hmm. trouble. But if you're not, I think you have to be earning serious money though, because it has to be more than what lawyers exactly are yeah, charge, yeah. right? Like at our level, it's just not going to happen. Yeah, there's like a handful of names in the vapor and synthwave yeah. scenes who lawyers might be interested in, but I think the rest of us. I mean, maybe this is this is going to sound very silly in 2023 when all the algorithms start shutting us down. But I think I think we're safe. Yeah, all good. Yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah. So met Josh. Um, we went for a very cute little date in uh, Kings Cross. Yeah. And uh we were like we had got on and uh we spoke about it and then you were like give me give me give me like a week and then he sent me back his his version of Metline Blues and it's quite funny because um I could actually probably play you the demo versus what he sent me. Yeah, I've got it on my phone. But um it's funny uh, cuz all of the things that I was so fucking stubborn about. Yeah. Um, sounds so bad in the demo to me yeah. now that I'm so you got to kill your to... darlings, don't you? Kill your babies. No, of course, of course. But like this was <laughs> don't this kill was... any babies. No. <laughs> this is a disclaimer. Yeah. Please don't go out killing. But, any but that's what you're saying, right? You were quite attached to certain things, and and having having a partner. I didn't like the idea that someone was um, better at doing what I was trying to do. Like as in, like there was someone better at making my my music better than me if it gets what i mean like yeah. it's not that oh he's better at making synthwave than me it's like oh this is my idea yeah. and he's fucking bested me but That's like good. it wasn't That's, partnerships are like that right like a, a oh yeah a, a football strike partnership right you need you need somebody to tee you up you know or somebody yeah. to, to, to finish off your ideas to finish you off i'll finish you off Josh. it was it was it's, <laughs> it's when I, when i say this it's, it's in no way kind of a bitter thing i think when i say i don't like i think I'm only saying that because my reaction when I heard his version was crying because I was very happy. I was very happy Love with it because I was like, oh my God, this guy knows. He, he can do what I had in my head better than I can do. do you know, yeah. Do you know what I did? I <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I worked on it. No, but um, I heard that no, go on. running bass line in, in like a lot of the synthwave tracks and it's, mm-hmm. uh, it's the preset of the Korg Poly 6. And I found that out because I, I, I messaged Sunglasses Kid on Facebook. I messaged him and said, how do you get that bass line? What is it? And he said, oh, it's the it's pre- preset one in the Korg Poly 6 mm. uh, synth plugin. Um, and then just slap that over the top, put some extra things on it. Um, and then, yeah, send that over to Josh and then Bob's your fanny. So <laughs> It's yeah. nice to hear the same story from two different perspectives. <laughs> <laughs> After... Well, like how the sausage was made, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, after after hearing that, I was really confident that I wanted mm-hmm. kind of Johnny involved in everything else to do with nice. what eventually became Arcade. I mean, kind of the the, the it's funny because now we're kind of at this kind of second. I'd say that when Johnny Johnny signed up and joined in, that was kind of like the first kind of evolution, and now we're we're currently in our second with the addition of everyone else 
um, joining. Yeah. And, well, let's and, let's maybe let's talk about the progression, right? So so, I mean, like the the name Iverson sounds like it's like a legacy from it being it a was, solo project. Yeah, it was, but then then you you found a right writing partner, started off kind of making trying to make fair like uh, music that was more strictly synthwave than, than it is now, right? Like there's mm. been a, a a process of evolution. Maybe we maybe we can talk about. Arcade going through to La Favier, going through to House Plants, going through to where we are now. Mm. Yeah, well, um, I mean, Arcade, but yes, very much was um, the 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 attempt, the the, the mimic of that sound, or at mm-hmm. least our interpretation of of synthwave. Yeah, obviously with vocals, but yeah, I can't remember who shared it who sent it through but um i recently saw um on one of our group chats where someone like shared basically shared a a tweet a so this is take. this is the, the male tears hot take i think right about vocals yeah anyway. yeah yeah so yeah shout out male tears male tears makes like wicked sort of electro kind of um indie gothy stuff um and has fans in the synth and vaporwave scenes but like doesn't identify as closely with with those scenes as mm. as maybe some of our projects do but is kind of doing something similar on the other side of the atlantic <laughs> their their take as far as far as i can tell was that there are two piece as well which is interesting right like like iverson although iverson being a two piece i don't know if that's still true but yeah like yeah. like iverson like like donor lens like like other duos, but um, Josh just shanked me with his um, with his candy his stick. Shanked. By the way, that, that's why we started giggling. <laughs> yeah, just got fully shanked. Anyway, uh, but yeah, yeah um, their take was basically that um, vocal synthwave is quite a strange term because um, synthwave is like an interpretation of of eighties music, and um, like vocal synthwave could I mean it, it it should be the same thing as synth pop, right? Synth pop and vocal synthwave. Are essentially the same thing. Mm. It's a bit like that, you know, that Mitch Hedberg joke. Where it's like I remix the remix and put it back to normal. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's like that kind of thing, right? Mm. <laughs> it's, it's, it seems like a like a, a strange uh, evolution, but like I, th- I think like vocal synthwave and synth pop are two quite distinct things. And maybe maybe you started off writing what would be considered vocal synthwave and are like now gravitating towards something which is more like actual 80s synth pop. Well, I would say that vo- like vocal synth wave is essentially putting a vocal line over what would be probably just a instrumental synth track. Maybe there's no real celibate maybe maybe you know you can kind of carve a a verse and a chorus out of an A and B section in in like what would just be a kind of standard more dancey instrumental track whereas synth pop there's more of a focus on the pop and the the synth wave element is far more aesthetic than it is to do with the composition vocal synth wave the 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 track is first and the vocal comes second and, and sits on the top whereas synth pop would be well the melody and then basing all the all the instrumentation and all of the aesthetic of it around that. That's an interesting observation. Well, I mean, do you observe music? No, you listen to it. Oh, you melon. Yeah. Anyway, I think um, yeah. This, I mean, you know, you can be the the most sort of talented producer or instrumentalist, but there there is something kind of magical about writing a top line and writing a, a catchy melodic hook. Like, and you yeah. know, I know so many. Like I, I I grew up with like shit hot uh, classical and jazz musicians and like they're always snooty about vocalists. Like jazz instrumentalists are often snooty about vocalists because it's like you know I practice my bebop scales for eight hours a day and then the singer just shows up and everybody's more interested in the singer, <laughs> which is like it, it's pure saltiness because there is something so magical about somebody who can sing and there's something so magical about somebody who can write yeah. a melody. Like there's that quote from Leonard Bernstein who said he would trade his piano skills his composition skills his conducting skills he trade all of that just for the ability to sing well um there's so much snobbery in music my god just like everyone is, just has their opinions it's just like okay i get it Shh. but yeah like i think i guess because you know a lot of the the music in the 80s like there were it, it's not all done by one person right everybody has a, has a role to play and you mm. know like you got amazing session musicians and you've got one person 
you know, who, who, who's doing the arrangements and somebody's producing and somebody's engineering. Like everybody's got specific roles. Like now, we ha- when we're copying this music or sort of filtering this music through, you know, the the we're, we're doing our version of it. You know, from from our our point in the future. Like we've got, you know, it tends to be one person trying to do everybody's job, and like we're probably not going to do every single job as well as that music was done in the 80s by a team of like insane specialists. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so maybe you know, it, it's maybe it's not surprising that like sometimes the vocals and the melodies sound like an afterthought. I mean, does that lead on quite nicely to uh, where we are now? We've, we've, we've sort of. Well, I'd say it, if arcade, if arcade was the brain, was like the Le Fabio was definitely trying to do more synth pop. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I remember yeah. it's a shift from like vocal synthwave stuff to, to to vocal vocal pop stuff. Yeah, I mean, like I, I do, I do kind of remember getting like there, there, there was all there was always a little bit of pushback from uh, like hardcore synth synthwave fans. Um, seem to not want vocals on their synth wave, and, yeah. and I can I can I can, I can understand that. So um, I guess there was, it, you know, having that pushback, even if it wasn't you know unanimous, it wasn't universal. But seeing that sort of thing made me think, okay, well maybe like let's scoot away from trying to kind of do 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 what would be considered traditional, and just kind of. Think more aesthetically, '80s, and write pop, because the people who are there for that will will you know will will always be there for that, and will, you know will listen to us and hopefully enjoy what we what we put out. So the La, La, La Favia tracks wouldn't necessarily make much sense as like in instrumental form, right? Like releasing that as an instrumental album would 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 be missing the kind of meat of it, I guess. I yeah. mean, people have asked. People have asked, and to be honest, that probably could be maybe not lucrative, but yeah. there would be people who who would appreciate. Yeah. Um, I've, I, but these know, are written as songs, right? I know, but something? but you know, I guess I guess you know, some people, everyone wants the uh, the instrumental. Well, not everyone, but some, I've, I've, I just remember haunted by YouTube comments being like, and especially as the singer. Yeah, you can't yeah. help but take it, take it slightly, uh, yeah. take, take it like a slight diss. What made me laugh is the when we when we released the Le Favier, the music video, the people coming out with some of their comments. Oh my god, dude, we were getting some hate, weren't we? Yeah, that was so funny. Like just like, no, I don't like this. They was, don't, was, I don't like your face. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's one, it's one <laughs> thing putting your voice on a track and then and then showing your face. It's like two stages of things that like people who like vaporwave and synthwave music they like this kind of abstraction. They like n- not knowing who the artists are. They like not hearing human voice. I mean, I, I say they like they, some people for whatever reason like this kind of anonymity thing. Mm. Um, because it's quite magical, and I think it's this like postmodern thing of sort of filling in the blanks, right? Like, it's mm. you 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 present a kind of fairly inscrutable object to people, and then they they kind of use their own imaginations to complete it. Mm. Whereas you know, singing and singing and showing your face is like how music has been made for for millennia, right? Like the, this anonymous thing is is maybe like a, a more recent thing, and some people are very attached to it. Yeah, um, but you know, it's it's there's a reason why people like songs and there's a reason why people like singers and seeing who's behind the music right yeah mm-hmm. each to their own and you've got lovely faces oh well to be, to be honest that's that's just because we had that video posted on two different things i mean if you look at the comments on on our on our <laughs> on our actual band youtube um it's all it's all positive or nice but Where's youtube slash iverson um New retro wave, okay. Because well, the, new retro wave, Marshall, where... Marshall McLuhan thing, right? The medium is the message, right? Like where where you put your music out, where you put your your art out, and the audience it, it kind of reaches like that. That dictates what the response you're going to get is. Like. No, absolutely, and it's 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 good, it's good to kind of get that that negative feedback because it, it either um, prompts you to change, or if if you're if you're kind of almost looking to upset the apple cart, mm-hmm. if that's a yeah phrase, <laughs> you, you you can you can get kind of a confirmation and affirmation from that. Because we're all apple pickers around here, aren't we? <laughs> but um, so yeah, you're, you're quite pleased to sort of uh, polarize people now, rather than I mean. Because I think because the the early stuff like uh, it got picked up on New Retro Wave and and like got a lot of, a lot well, of traction right a lot of success without without Arcade we would have never met 
that's how we met. That's how we met Jay and Enzo, and Time Slaves and, and all the yeah all those. If but, it, yeah, so if it wasn't for if it wasn't for Arcade, yeah. we wouldn't have met them. Yeah. I, don't, I think music artists don't like to stand still. The amount of like artists that I've been into that have changed styles yeah. or they change stuff that they're doing, I think it's important. Obviously, yeah. you're gonna you're gonna annoy a few fans, but yeah. I think there's no. If you, as a creative person, you can't stand so you've got to just keep yourself engaged and change and just developing. Otherwise, yeah, you're gonna go mad. Yeah. But, I think, but not everyone's gonna go with you, and that's fine, right? No, like hopefully you'll pick new people up yeah. along the way, and hopefully there's a core of people who are happy to see you evolve. Yeah, I don't think it's not a drastic shift, right? Like moving from making uh, music inspired by music inspired by the '80s and uh, shifting to making music inspired by the 80s, right? That's that's the shift from from arcade to La Favie. I mean, that's a very confusing sentence. He, well, <laughs> I, I know I get I get I get completely what <clears throat> you mean, but I I I I would say that we we never. I was still even with arcade, though I was listening to synthwave mm-hmm. by by kind like what I guess of we've. Our peers and our contemporaries. Yeah, I was listening. It was, but it was never like we were never. I was never drawing on them for inspiration in writing. I was still kind of going back to source, and that's that's why because because once. Tell me get, what the sources are. What what eighties music sort of um, like rounds La Favier era? What what eighties? Oh, sources sorry, was. I thought we were still on arcade. Yeah. Well, tell me. Yeah, let's let's um, let's, let's go on back <clears throat> to arcade. But um, sorry, Tom. That's all right. Um, <laughs> But yeah, with 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 arcade, it was like Depeche Mode and yeah. Depeche Mode, um, <laughs> and cocaine enthusiast Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> <laughs> well, t- Tango in the Night's always a touchstone, isn't it? Like for 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 like uh, synth and vaporwave musicians, right? It's like it's, it seems to be less about. Like rumors is the big one with with the general public. Tusk is what sort of kind of cool indie people say they like because it's like a big budget experimental record. But Tango in the Night for all those like um, sort of plasticky eighties keyboard sounds and big gated drums and sort of uh, super breathy vocals and stuff. That's 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 what gets people going, right? So it yeah. gets me going. Yeah, Tango in the Night over rumors. Hot cool. Take. I do love a bit of gated reverb. Yeah, but. Um, <laughs> I'd say I'd say the big the big difference and once again thank you to Time Slave for allowing us to have the time to kind of and 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 just giving us the space to to experiment and do stuff but the the real big change was I just got the legacy pack from Korg. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Poly 6 uh Monopoly um or Monopoly Wave Station MS20 <laughs> yeah. MS20 yeah 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 I've got the mini at home but I don't don't know no yeah <laughs> don't yeah. know how to use that one yeah. having <laughs> that one's a beast yeah it is. I'd say I'd say aside from what Johnny added after I was done with it like arcade was made completely off of like stock okay, logic yeah, yeah 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 um, which sound great well Thank Logic and yeah. their and their presets. <laughs> Thanks, Apple. I think they've got the best presets. Their Ableton stock instrument presets suck. Mm. Tell you what, producers uh, out there, I've been all over can the I, can alchemy. Can I get an oh yeah? <laughs> can I get an oh yeah? Uh, no, Alchemy, the new uh, updated version of Alchemy, has got some sick sounds on there. I think I sat down for an evening once and just like cycled through all the sound. There's loads yeah. of them. I was like, mm, just listening to all of them. Um, I think, like, cool actually, sound. what you were saying, Josh, like, this is um, synthwave and vaporwave, like, both are, are scenes that are not snooty about presets. Like, presets exist for a reason. And, like, what I was saying about, like, maybe trying to do too many things, like, trying to be an expert sound designer on top of being a great composer, a great producer, a great arranger, a great mm. engineer, like, maybe that's, that's an ask too much. Like, there's, there's nothing wrong with getting a preset up and, and yeah. tweaking it mm. and, like, um, going with your instinct like yeah. if it sounds you, you good you hear a preset right and it sets some, yeah. some bells off you're like oh I know that sound or it situates you in a time and a, a place and I think that's yeah, very important for, it enthuses for you I mean, and the it only gets time, you going only time when like kind of 
actually kind of going into some like deeper synthesis came in between in between Le Fabier and Houseplants, yeah. which was basically just me and Johnny acquiring more hard synths. Yeah, and there's there's uh, a lot of knob twiddling on, on Houseplants, right? Like a lot of kind of movement in the sounds. Well, I love a bit of knob twiddling. I'm I'm relatively I, I'm I'm pretty skint when it comes to being able to spend money on mm. music, new music equipment. So um, all you like I, you like your Behringer boys. Behringer you, you are a Behringer boy. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, uh, Patreon! Um, if you want to sponsor uh, Josh or uh, no, sorry, um, it's only go fans. on. Uh, I was going to say yeah, go on, go find Josh's OnlyFans. Um, what's what's your OnlyFans name? Oh, Jesus Christ. All right, all right. Back in the room, back in the room, back in the room. We've come back to... So, yeah, so, so like, you talk about a progression from Arcade to La Fave to, to Heartbeats of, of, like, maybe uh, being more adventurous with your sound choices, breaking out of the box a little bit, getting some mm. toys and stuff, and, like, may, maybe that's... That's the kind of process of well, yeah, if, get, if, getting if, closer to the music that that you you dream of making. Or what I think was a, a really big uh, step, and this is where, we, where, we, where we're moving towards now. But getting live drums on uh, some of the heartbeats track, no, heartbeats house plants tracks. Yeah, um, it makes such a big difference. Such a big like li- like live instruments played by a human. <laughs> just, Do you want to name the human? Yeah, of course. It's uh, Mister Max Marlow. Hey, mm. I mean, if if like if going from arcade to Lafavio was going from like stock VSTs to more boutique VSTs and just external VSTs, mm-hmm. then definitely going from Lafavio to Houseplants was going from digital to more analog sources of audio. Um, so yeah, humans, live drums, yeah, humans. and and people who aren't you two, right? Why? Well, yeah. yeah. Um I mean we're talking to one of them now. Yep. Um we're Me. gone from being yeah. <laughs> just just to clarify that was Tom. <laughs> um but yeah, no, um we went from one to two to five. It's it's a bit weird, it's kind of the opposite of is it meiosis when it's just like uh it's your cells dividing. Yeah. Um yeah, we we kind of got an extra one on the on the second kind of like split, but yeah, science. Yeah, um, my it's like a it's a privilege, right? Like not every uh, producer or engineer is going to have the the chance to kind of bring other people into their world because it sort of has financial implications, right? Like the music is a is a tough game to be in. It's like the the easiest way is to to do it on your own. Yeah. But, as soon as you bring more people in, you know, the it makes less and less financial sense, but like the rewards are other people contributing their own kind of ideas and experience mm. or like helping to execute your vision in kind of ways that you kind of pro- wouldn't necessarily do yourself, but like weirdly could be closer to your vision. Yeah, I'd, I'd like, I, I used to kind of, uh, especially before writing Houseplants, there was this kind of, long hiatus which wasn't supposed to be a hiatus just this long kind of gap yeah and i'd like what were the date is 2017 through to 2021 yeah yeah and i would like beat myself up with every kind of passing month thinking what the fuck why haven't you put anything out because especially especially in this scene and vaporwave as well and just just internet music in general yeah the, the, the 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 kind of um um, it's a rapid release rate. Right? Rapid release. The pro- everyone yeah. is so prolific. Yeah, the prolific was the word. I was the thing is, for. like what what you're doing, it's not possible to be putting out an album a month like Death Dynamic Shroud do with their sort of mixtapes and stuff like that. Like, it's not possible, especially that we all work day jobs. Even if some of them relate to music, it's not possible yeah. to write a full band vocal pop album mm. every every month or you know every quarter right like you know whatever the gap was four years is like in the kind of um golden age of record labels you know the the 70s and 80s which is kind of the music that we're referencing like that would be that wouldn't be worrying right people if if we were making music in the 80s people would be like, where the fuck have iverson gone we haven't heard from them for four years that's just like a normal-ish like album release cycle 
Mm-hmm. But it, mm-hmm. it is a long time in this kind of fast internet age. And like Daniel Ek from Spotify was saying, like, you know, if you release music like this, you're a dinosaur. You know, like that you're supposed to be releasing singles rather than albums, and you're supposed to be doing it fucking often. Yeah, but you know, I mean, I'm, I, I we're think bucking that trend. Hopefully. Album, we're albums, okay. albums are coming back though. Like p- yeah. people are realizing reaction to that shit because that's, that's yeah. a provocative viewpoint, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It like, goes against how music has been been made historically. Yeah, I mean, my 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 thing like now i don't i don't really look back on that kind of four year gap with um with any kind of animosity or, or mm-hmm. saltiness purely because um only with the gift of hindsight that those four years were massively important to us as far as mm-hmm. kind of um meeting people yeah talking there were live shows weren't there, throughout the whole time shows. and and like Schmoozing. and like kind of two years of of lockdown stuff True. In, that, in yeah. that time as well, where we're probably doing solo stuff, work, it, working on skills. If it wasn't mm. for for lockdown, I well it would have taken me longer, but I wouldn't have been where I am at now with my keyboard skills. Because I remember I, I, I was the, originally a guitarist, and then I fucked my hand up, and then went on to the piano. So those 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 months locked away, it's good for me. Mm. Yeah, and yeah, there were some benefits, weren't there? Yeah. For, for musicians. Like those during during that time, like I, I mean, personally, I spent a lot of time with um, working working with Time Slave and and MP, um, MPF. So doing, you were doing like video stuff for them, right? I was like doing video, stuff. I was doing like their their kind of um, social media management and stuff, and also making content. You said you got quite enamoured with the stuff that MPF was was releasing, kind of. Um, you know, above above what Time Slave was putting out, right? Like the kind of vapor, more experimental sort of vapor stuff. It just felt feels, and obviously, I just felt like MPF had a little bit more energy. It was it was like the 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 aesthetic of of um, synthwave is so kind of uh, almost it's written down now it's it's so kind of uh concrete that mm-hmm. you, you 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 can get a little bit stagnant with it but um vaporwave just has this kind of uh well kind of fluidity or yeah. gaseous people got tired of the of the, the signifiers move. right like the 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 windows xp stuff the the busts like dolphins like sea mm. punky stuff like that that aesthetic uh people don't do very much these days, right? Like, whereas, like, maybe some of the synthwave signifiers have, have stuck around a little bit longer. The grid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the car going down the grid with the sunset yeah. in the background. But, um, yeah, no, like... It, there's it, something magical, but people are captivated by those signifiers for a reason, right? They're evocative yeah. and people keep on discovering... I think there's also those. something to say for the for mine and Johnny's age... I mean, we 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 always did find it funny that we were born in the middle of the '90s and we were enamoured with making uh, music that took people back to the '80s. Um, I think it would be kind of standard for us to gravitate towards uh, the the genre, the internet genre that most aligns with what we would consider nostalgia, Y2K and all that lot. Um, that's what's happening now right yeah hyper pop people and that a lot of new vaporwave stuff has got y2k aesthetics and break beats are everywhere now this whole like video game like video game jungle thing this kind of pizza hotline mm, stuff mm. like that's that's massive even you listen to six music yeah you don't hear much sort of guitar music and you hear a lot of sort of break beats and female yeah. vocals and that yeah. pizza hotline went off the um the gig at fol- uh, folklore yeah double vision event the uh, yeah um the, fuck, the jungle remix of uh, Pokemon, Pokemon. Battle thing. Oh, everyone was just. Well, he really made that when he was eighteen. It. He was yeah. saying, and he said he he wasn't going to play it, and then he was just sort of um, felt out the room and thought oh. it was you know they were on his side. So yeah, oh, it went off because probably you know I mean I didn't notice it at the time, but he you know he made it when he's eighteen. I'm, I, his production skills have almost certainly leveled up yeah. since then. But like, there's something magical about what you made as yeah. a kid, right? This just kind of youthful exuberance. Yeah, he bust, busted that one out. Boom. Very cool. It was shit hot. But yeah, maybe like uh, to my ears, like the um, houseplant stuff and like what the the stuff that, that's going to happen post houseplants, like there, there sounds like some early 90s stuff going into the mix, this kind of new Jack Swing 
stuff like you definitely hear that on some of the house plants tracks right 80s bleeding into the early 90s yeah. is this johnny's territory well i think um the house plants was the first time we were actually writing in songs. the same room yeah mm-hmm. so um like i because i think again thanks to lockdown it made me a lot more confident with my songwriting because i just i'd sit down and i'd be like right i want to write a song but I'm going to get to the end of the day, I'm going to have the chords, I'm going to have the melody, I'm going to have all this stuff, the drums, whatever. And um, and it helped a lot. And then... Yeah. Were I'd you able up... to treat Iverson or writing music like as more of a day job? Was, was, was your situation... Did you have more time for music? Yeah, I've always got time for music. I don't see it as... I don't, Third I don't, lockdown. Yeah, I don't see... Whenever I'm doing... Whenever I'm writing music for either Iverson or Cordata or whatever... I don't see it as if as soon as I start seeing it as work, then I I, I stop. I go have a break. It I was going to say it's, it almost sounded like you were saying the opposite of that. Like I know Nick Cave has this idea that like musicians should see music as as a job, and he goes to work every day, which is he goes into his studio or his writing writing yeah. room, and he 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 works at his craft every day between a, a certain time and a certain time, and it's like not every day the muse is going to visit, mm. but you're mm. exercising your chops. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd eventually eventually like to because obviously I'm 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 a teacher now, but um, with the music stuff that I'm doing now, I'd love to get to a point where I'd be able to have that luxury. Yeah. Um, because again, yeah, it wouldn't feel like work to me. I'd, yeah, I'd, that is a privilege. Yeah, it would be such an amazing privilege. It will fit when when music is your work. It, it will feel like work to you, like for better or worse. Yeah. Because but, you you have to treat it like that, right? Yeah. You need to put food up, food on the table. Yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I sort of I, for house plants, I'd write a few little ideas, little sketches, chuck them over to Josh, and then. He had, had his stuff, and then um, so like uh, house plant. No, heartbeats was a, is always a special track for me because it was the first time that we, was in the room. Yeah, we, we were watching some documentary about um, MIA, and then um, it got to the end, and then <laughs> Josh just looks at me and goes, "We should write a ballad." And so we just went into Don't the room. Know why we got that from watching? Yeah, MIA. I yeah, you just you just sort of stood up. Does and she just have like, ballads? I don't know. I mean, we were watching, we were watching something more specifically about paper planes and, yeah, yeah. and how that was created. So I don't know how we got ballad from paper planes. Yeah, but we I just went into the room, sat down. I whacked out some chords. You whacked out a gorgeous guitar part, and we put the drums over the top. And uh, yeah, and that was that. And, and it was the just, one in the sort of Midwest emo tuning on the guitar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. It was, and it, it was just so spontaneous. And and it was like that was that was amazing. I really enjoyed that day. Yeah, that's cool. I think I'm, I'm glad you you guys like have, have, have you know we you know you put out two albums before you were like writing together in the room or sort of feeling like that was when your best work was done. I think like me, me and Jay and Donalens are like in the same position because of lockdown. Um, we had to do so much stuff remotely, and like the, the the record we're working on now, which is our fourth, like we're doing stuff together in person, and it, it's it, it's really nice. But like it's so weird that we put our two albums in between. You know, after our first, we put our second and our third. Like just we transferring things to each other. Mm-hmm. There's something special about being being in a room with a writing partner. Yeah. And yeah, you don't have to wait for that retransfer link to yeah. appear. Yeah, but you need to be comfortable in each other's presence, right? Because it's quite... <laughs> crunching yeah. that peppermint thing. It yeah, can... it's, it's quite a sort of... Um, you feel quite exposed, don't you? Like, oh, like yeah. showing your ideas to each other and you have to like learn to be mature and not kind of uh, shoot down each other's ideas and stuff oh, yeah. you need to hit no bad ideas in this no I'm trying, to remember, safe space. Yeah. I'm trying to remember if we we had this conversation when we met for drinks in Bethnal <laughs> but like um I am very um I'm very like picky I'm very yeah. I, 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 I deal well yeah there's that and I deal with massive imposter syndrome yeah and so that makes it I'm, I'm sure like you said, mm-hmm. it's it's difficult for everyone writing in front of someone if they're if they're most most often doing it alone. Yeah. Um, but like Johnny um, is one of the few people, and when I say few, I mean one of two um, people. And by the way, I mean I feel like, especially as the as the the band is kind of expanding with its its, its its members. I'm not saying that 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 number won't increase in time. I mean, kids choir. 
Yeah. That's what's next, is it? String section, kids' yeah. choir. No, I just I, gospel. I, I just mean like yeah. for, like for instance, before we started recording this, um, I kind of froze up about kind of trying ideas. Johnny's like a Labrador. Mm-hmm. He's 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 uh, you know uh, he'll throw himself into it, whereas I'm more like a cat. I'm mm-hmm. like I, I, and it's no it's no shade. I wonder whether every duo has that dynamic mm. because you just like two it's, two labradors making music they're not going to get anything done are they no, no, no it's just going to be yeah. clash yeah, yeah. It's, it's, no, be it's no shade on on you tom but because this is absolutely amazing space um i can imagine you're like insanely insanely productive in this space it's, it's an absolutely lovely studio um but because it's new for me yeah that's 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 one i mean i remember like when I went round to um, your man's, um, once again, not going to say names, but the saxophonist. Oh, okay. Um, Going around his, I was just like, no, because, you know, it may be strange, but, you know, me and your friends. So there's, 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 there's that kind of like bridge to one day being able to bowl in here and be like, let's be productive, let's write something and be able to just jump into it. Whereas going into there, it was like, Oh, this is a new space. I'm uncomfortable. Oh, you're a prick. I don't like you. Um, and like, I just. Uh, <laughs> it's so important. I mean, like, there's so many like huge artists feel that way now. Like, Billie Eilish works from home, doesn't she? Like, she, she can work in any studio she wants or with anyone, and she chooses to work from home with her brother. You know, like, mm. like when you're delivering a vocal performance, like being comfortable in your space is so much more important than than gear. There's so many like great vocal performances which are like recorded you know they were there with a demo vocal and they just happen to be magic you know they recorded mm. on a microphone that's clipping like loads of Bjork vocals are like clip into hell um, yeah Tame Impala's like drum set up in there in his room yeah yeah his first the first two the first EP the first album the drums on that yeah because like, performance is everything I think that I mean that may be what's uh, like the USP of Iverson, right? Is that like there's performances, there's vocal performances, the the keyboard parts aren't like clicked in on the on the MIDI grid, right? Like, Minor. Yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> yeah and, and uh, clicked in MIDI MIDI stuff is really cool because it's you know that's stuff that can't be played by a human. Like you think about Speed Demon, Michael Jackson, or something like that. Yeah, like, yeah. like no one's gonna play that kind of part. Like you're using MIDI to its advantages to be like let's have a robotic. Robot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, like the the Iverson stuff has been kind of trending more and more naturalistic, hasn't it? It's, you know, mm, having definitely. some live drums, having you know, having some stuff off grid, having these like very kind of human uh, vocal performances that aren't like tuned uh, to shit. too much. Yeah, tuned, <laughs> tuned a little bit, right? Mm. I think I, um, there's certain things you have to do to make music nowadays. So that like mm-hmm. vocals in tune. Yeah, it's very like pop, like vocals in tune. Yeah, things. Do on you do? Grid. Do you align? Do you vocal line stuff or not? Uh, yeah, what well, like get, um, move it in. Well, like like if you've got a stack of vocals, like a stack of backing vocals, are you happy for them to kind of have the sort of naturalistic kind of yeah. rubber? Yeah. See, see, this is where we 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 do kind of like. Okay, clash. who's who's who? I uh, you know one of my one of my big favorites is is Justin Vernon and all of the work yeah. that he does. Now, obviously, he's all in always in tune. But as far as kind of like um, whether whether all the double tracks and the, uh, whether all of the backing tracks completely perfectly yeah. align, each syllable like matching. Well, that's because he's essentially vocoding them, right? Like he he sings once and plays a plays a chord on the MIDI keyboard, and the, and like that that's how they end up being so on grid a lot it, of the time. In the in the in the latest stuff, yeah, um, yeah. But like, if you listen to like the first album, the first mm-hmm. EPs, and all those kind of demos and stuff, yeah. when it was literally kind of more kind of folky, yeah, the, the, there's a there's a lot of imperfections in how he records like the double tracks and the harmonies where they don't line up, and yeah. I I don't mind it. I mean, when it's I nice was to hear. that's how that's how music was historically, right? A lot. I mean, you know, we like '80s records. They didn't have vocal line plug in in the 80s did they mm. but they had fantastic backing singers who, yeah. <laughs> who were aligned right like yeah, yeah. Um, but wait but you, you say Johnny do you prefer do you like the kind of perfectionist no 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 but what I mean is what I mean is is like obviously Josh is a is a quality singer I'm also yeah. lazy though yeah no, but like <laughs> um, if you hear a track 
that's, that's a bit. Be on the track, sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you hear a track that's <laughs> like messy, is, think of right the great, way I think the way I the, the way I see Iverson is is synth pop. It's like glossy synth pop that has a kind of I don't know like a unique shine to it. And if you've got vocal, if you've got a pop track where the vocals are out of tune, it's not going to sit right. Mm-hmm. Or if you, if, or if it's kind of, but you can still. Cause I'm where are you going, Johnny? I don't know. I don't know where no, I'm going. I think with. I know where you're going, right? Like that is um, the because so many people put out music that is quantized and tuned. There's like a bit of an arms race, right? Like you, you have to kind of be in that ballpark, otherwise it's going to sound quite strange. Like if mm. you're making music that's supposed to be glossy and kind of uh, fancy, and you know, like a sort of expensive professional product products like like 80s music was yeah. at the time if you make it with the same standards as the 80s as opposed to the standards of the 2020s you might be sounding a little bit lacking yeah in terms of sort of dynamics and perfection and whatever so you, you kind of have to move with the times a little bit yeah um, it's a tricky but, but tricky be looking business. over your shoulder as well yeah the 80s definitely it's a tricky business uh making retro inspired yeah. music in the new world yeah. yeah, I know that Runners Club ninety five talk about this quite a lot. Like, I think um, Carl listens to a lot of like modern pop stuff. He listens to nineteen seventy five and and whatever Olivia Rodrigo and stuff like that to kind of hear what the trends are. But like, I don't think that those I don't think current trends align with his personal taste. Mm. And I think maybe that's that's true of you, possibly true of us. Yeah, I like. Um... My partner is an avid uh, Radio 6 listener. and um, It's not called that anymore. 6 Music. 6 Music. 6 Music. Music, music. Like, six, well, six, 6 Music, like, I guess I guess maybe this is, this is me being salty, but I've always wanted to write music that would be played on Radio 6 or 6 Music, but everything I write sounds like it's more likely going to end up on Radio 2. Magic. Or magic. Yeah. That, yeah, heart. And I I just don't like that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <Get me down. laughs> no, I just like I don't know. I don't understand why you know, okay, call in and tell us why um the music that gets picked to play on Six Music is far more um deserving of critical acclaim, but that's where I've that's where my critical kind of like music brain goes like, oh, that's a good, that's a good song. Um, but the, the six music aesthetic is like, is, is more indie, more experimental yeah. than, than kind of slick charts, mainstream pop. I guess there's like a push pull with, with all of us that like, we like experimental music and we like super mainstream pop, right? Like in, in the past, you kind of had to pick your, pick your team, right? Yeah. You had to choose which side to, I, and it's quite difficult to make music if you're attracted to both things. You know, I'm attracted to very lo-fi stuff and I'm attracted to whatever, scritty politi like the, the most polished music like imaginable. Mm. Um, it's kind of, sometimes maybe you get option paralysis or you, I don't know, if I see an artist who does the lo-fi thing fantastically well, I'm like, oh, I wish I could be a bit more like that. And then I see somebody who's like pristine as fuck. I'm like, oh, I wish I was, mm. you yeah. know. I think it's just don't don't compare yourself to other people because Iverson have got a unique thing going on. Like it's yeah. obviously you know it's it's clear what the influences are, but like Iverson's position within the synthwave scene or like within this you know whatever twenty twenty two twenty twenty three music scene, like there there is a USP for sure. Yeah. Well, as far as far as like kind of what I listen to on the day to day, great TV show, um, but yeah. like it's. Um, I guess, I guess, sorry, I, I, I did take a bit of a kind of tangent there, but what I was trying to get at was I am aware of current trends. I'm aware of, of, of what, like, I, I'm, to be honest, I only get my um, 1975 exposure from TikTok because for some reason TikTok thinks that I need to see Matt Healy on stage every other video. And I... He's I, a bit of a prat, isn't he? I my my thing with with 1975 is I think their music is absolutely brilliant and it pisses me off because I do feel like he's a bit of a prat but I think that 
me saying Pratt is is coming from this inner saltiness that like his 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 ease of kind of writing uh, like top lines and and just the aesthetic of uh, I'm saying aesthetic an awful lot, but just the the sound of the 1975 is just really good. Okay. Has really good pop music. It's not my. It's not my scene. The the one thing that Matty Healy's ever done, which which amused me, was he was being interviewed by uh, some sort of Valley Girl type Californian kind of interviewer, and she was asking him what his favorite essential oil was. Oh um, no! I yeah. just I saw that. Like, yeah. And, he, and he's like, well, "What the fuck's that?" And she sort of exp- explains what an essential oil it's is. Like he's petrol. like, "I don't know, petrol." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But um, to 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 be honest, as as far as like what I do listen to, it uh, when whenever I find myself listening to new music, it's not new. It's new to me. Mm-hmm. I'm re- I've, like recently, my new thing has been um, I've been listening a lot to old Hall and Oates albums. Yeah. Like um, I think it's like abandoned dinette. Uh, luncheonette you were singing a bit of a deep cut earlier weren't you yeah in the studio. which one was that um that was uh, i th- that's how long we've been talking because that was on that was at the, on, start. On the start of this yeah but um you okay <laughs> that was that was off uh, the silver hall of notes album yeah um but because i've been listening to that and thank you spotify for your radio mm-hmm. i've just been doing sorry i'm not i'm not gonna i'm not gonna fall off this chair again oh yeah yeah um, uh, josh fell off my sort of chiropractic chair earlier didn't you it was really that. funny it um was. but um yeah through through them i've kind of been listening to a lot of asia and i am getting into steely dan yes 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 tell me tell me which steely dan album just asia Oh, that Asia. Sorry, I thought you were talking about Asia. It was a heat of... No, 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 no. <laughs> More like Peg and like... Um, nice. what's, the, what's the album that kind of has a bit of a nonsense cover with the mouth and it's it's got like... Um, Do It Again and... Yeah. Uh, reeling in the Years. And yeah, that. yeah, yeah Reeling that's, that's, that's what one. I was thinking about. Okay. But you, need to, you need to get into Gaucho. You need to get into I've, the really shiny stuff. I've listened to... I've listened to... Um, Sweet 19. Hey 19. Hey 19. Uh, like, listen to that. I've also listened to... Um, oh, what I really liked was um, any, um, any... Any major dude. Any major tell- dude will tell you. I nice. think that's absolutely brilliant. Nice. But yeah, so... Whenever yeah, I'm, when I'm it, pushing to take this podcast to be like a parenting and Stevie Dan podcast, just like sort of dad chat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's can talk what, about lawn mowers. Can talk about like your favourite Steely Dan solo is. Every year yes. I find my my Spotify. This isn't Johnny's scene. I can tell. <laughs> my Spotify. Johnny, Johnny, I think you should. Um, can, can we pivot? Like uh, take a hard pivot, and because you you brought up Core Data, which is your solo project. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. it's nice to kind of uh, talk about what what you boys do aside from from your sort of and yeah. day job, as it were. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, Core Data is my psychedelic trance alias, uh, but not psychedelic. Because if you, if someone says psychedelic trance, you immediately, if you know what it is, it's that lots of acid, lots of sort of like do stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, which I do like, but I get a bit bored of. So I've ma- I just make kind of uh, a record label called Platypus Records inspired music. With lots of bendy 303s, like all that sort of, and some crazy, weird um, metallic sounds. So, yeah, I do that, uh, which is fun. Does that scratch quite a different itch to Iverson? Like, are you, is it, does Iverson scratch your sort of harmonica melodic? Yeah, itch I mean, in a way that, that that doesn't, or do you try to bring sort of harmonies and melodies into your into the transform? Um, I would say that uh, I always like. I like performing. I like performing like live instruments, performing, uh, playing the keys and singing and all that sort of stuff. So that's why I love Iverson and all that. And um, but my first love was trance, like '90s classic trance, like your Paul Van Dyke, or your uh, Robert Char- um, what's his name, Robert Miles, yeah. uh, that sort of stuff. Then I got into um, and Juno beats and just all that. Um, the 90s music for me I think is my favourite decade for music 
you had so much stuff going on. But that nineties trance is, is incredible. Nineties dance music is incredible. And then that's why uh got into that. Um yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Good to fill in the gaps. Yeah, I'm I'm conscious of time because obviously we've been talking for quite a long time. Um we should talk a bit about the the Wolf Club gig which is is coming up in, in February, right? So that's like a Yeah. Yeah, no, on the eighteenth of February we are twenty twenty three. 2023 in, a, well, in the future as, as of today in two 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 days time um yeah, yeah. we'll release this in a different year to the year we recorded it whoa welcome out. to 2023 flying cars and <laughs> turkish delight um <laughs> yeah we're um yeah on the 18th 18th of february um supporting wolf club at the black heart um, which uh, I'm looking forward to. Yeah. Are you I'm, looking forward to I am so ready. Are you looking forward to it? I am. Um, I mean, we've we've been kind of, uh, before recording this, we've been finalising kind of bass parts for our next single, which mm-hmm. we hope to be playing um, that night. It's going to be quite different. I mean, um, I guess we didn't really manage to... Um, we went we went off a little bit and weren't able to talk too much about what the future holds for for us as a band. Um, but uh, if you want a little, give us a glimpse. Yeah. Well, yeah. If you want a glimpse, come to come to the Wolf Club. Gig Put on and... your synthy pants and come down and enjoy your set. <laughs> and also Wolf Club set as well. It's yeah. an attractive pitch. Yeah. Um, I won't be doing that. Don't worry. But yeah, no, like. Um, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun gig. It's also gonna be nice because I feel like um, we've 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 been playing live. Need some squash. Squash. <laughs> Give me squash. Squashy. <coughs> you got withdrawals. Yeah, withdrawals from the right diluting juice. Right the microphone, you mug. That's all right. It's got a protective sheath. <laughs> Where did that come from? Fucking hell. Um, oh. But yeah, no, because because we've been like we've been playing live um, in the current configuration <laughs> with that that would be. Tom on bass, uh, Jay on guitars, Johnny on keys. No, 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 wrong instrument. Let's check. Johnny on piano. Me on vocals and synths and Max on drums. Yeah. Um, and we've been doing that for a little over a year now all together. And uh, we like all gig- love each other. Gigging with a bit more frequency, right? Yeah. Josh is, yeah. My, uh, is, is in my groomsman team. When we get married, so isn't that a cute thing? When we get married? Yeah, no, when I get married, yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> Freudian slip there. Sorry, Ness, I'm nicking your man. Um, yeah, no, so so this this will be uh, this will be a slightly different gig as well because uh, it's not that we've 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 gotten we've our, our set list has become a bit kind of uh, pedestrian so we're going to switch it up make yeah. it a little bit more exciting and I think that the pedestrian I think it's in your head that it being pedestrian because every every gig there's been a different sort of um uh, cover at the end. I think yeah. I think pedestrian is 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 too harsh and the wrong word. Yeah, I will say. Can but we can we list list the covers that have happened at the end of the set? Because what the sensible thing to do would be to you know we work quite hard learning these tunes. It'd be sensible to kind of repeat them. But every every show we've been um, we want to keep you on your toes. Yeah, you know, learning so learning a new difficult song. So yeah. what have those been? So we've had killing in the name of. Banger. What an absolute banger. Um, but I missed that because I wasn't there. Yeah. That was really annoying. Smell Like Teen Spirit, you were there for. That was good fun. Mm. Um, we did Sabotage. Uh, sabotage. That was um, and I kind of sabotaged it by, by launching it at a very fast tempo on the bass. <laughs> 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 Some exuberance. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, no, that's the right tempo. I was significantly faster than that. Not good. No bueno. We should have done fun, that. though. Yeah. And then Blue Monday on the last two gigs. Yeah, I think you skipped off. over the best one. The post bar one. Oh well, that the thing is, is that wait, wait what? Yeah, when we did um, Tears, for Tears for Fears. Oh yeah. yeah, but I was that was slick. That was that that, that was rehearsed. Yeah. Some of the other ones were under rehearsed. Yeah. yeah, but that's what I was kind of. That's that's always what I've liked about the end of the set covers. Is I wanted that to kind of almost be our little kind of picadillo to to kind of like if that's the I think that's the right word, but like something like that to remember us by. Our calling card was the kind of out of nowhere hard rock cover mm-hmm. sitting right at the end yep. which uh, um, everybody wants to rule the world wouldn't really kind of fall in line with that was too slick 
it's it's too it's it's eighties. It's kind of in line with okay. the rest of the set. Same with same with Blue Monday, really. And I, I like I felt like we definitely should have done War Pigs. I don't know what that is. What's that? Black Sabbath. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, yeah, I, that's uh, nice. It's, yeah, not taking yourself too seriously, right? Throwing throwing in a sort of teenage boy. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine us doing Bohemian Rhapsody, but just the. The, the, the 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 oh, no, the I didn't finish my sentence and I just said throwing in a teenage boy. I don't. <laughs> I think it's sort of like that kind Come of. Come on, Gary! Yeah, that's like, what teenage oh, boy is called know. Gary, Josh? Yeah. But yeah, I, yeah, I mean, that, that kind of school band enthusiasm and exuberance. That's, yeah. that's nice to channel and be, be very slick in the main body of the set and then um, have a, a, sl- a sloppy encore. It's nice. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's kind of like. I mean, obviously. The, the band is kind of stripped down the middle of uh, who has kids and who doesn't have kids. So I think that's a definite um, kind of um, divider in the band as far as kind of attitude. Um, I only say this because <laughs> the dads tend to be far more sensible at band practice. Tom and Jay kind of stand there while uh, <laughs> Max and Johnny kind of wrestle it's on the floor. It's all relative. I don't think we are that sensible. <laughs> no, like, Jay's got a hell of a commute, though. Like, yeah. coming up from Wales, like, making making good use of the time is, um, is important. I, I've got a, a, a fear that, like, when, some of our wrestling matches, we're going to remove items of clothing, and then, like, Tom's just going to come in and just see us, like, half naked on the floor and just think, what the f- fuck are you two doing nothing would surprise me at yeah. this point but that's that you know the, uh, well, the, one of the things that i've really <laughs> liked about and sorry if this kind of you know obviously edit this out but if it's a bit too mushy but i haven't had this sort of kind of band camaraderie i was i used to say since my like first band yeah. when i was a kid when yeah. i was that teenager mm-hmm. you know with the whole kind of let's fucking throw in like a a hard rock cover and stuff but like quite honestly now now thinking about it like due to how long we've actually been going now together i know it's only been a year but i kind of see us going for a few more you know and I really enjoy it, and I, I I absolutely love the 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 dynamic that we have, the the comfortability we have playing. Um, I'm, I remember coming off um, after folklore, and Max was like, oh, it, "This feels like we're in a we're a party band, like we 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 have in a fun good way, on. right? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah." yeah. yeah. And you know, like a well-drilled part, like Talking Heads or, or something like that, like a like a good times band. Yeah, who are, I, who are slick as hell. I, I, I never uh, mates. That's yeah, I've never it. had I've never had a bad time on stage. It, like I know that we've had our kind of like technical hiccups, particularly like yeah, you know, you, cool. you don't seem fussed by those, which is cool. Not really, just yeah. kind of have fun with it because if you have fun, then hopefully everyone watching has yeah. fun, and that's that's that's. Ultimately, what what I'm, I'm I'd I'd like to kind of achieve. Yeah. So and and going forward, like musically with the stuff that we're writing, there's uh, we've we've kind of like thrown away the pretentiousness. We're like just yeah. writing. I mean the the lyrics are loosely based on my partner, but outside of that, it's kind of saying. If we're gonna write a pop song, let's write a fun pop song that feels good to listen to, feels good to play. And um, Are you having trouble with your trousers, Johnny? Yes. Well, the thing if you inside my trousers, <laughs> if you if <laughs> you, you come if you come to the gig, if you come to the gig in February, <laughs> um, you will you will see us play that, and essentially mm-hmm. that that is what I hope to be the future of Iverson. Essentially, kind of maybe breaking breaking the chains of. You know, um, being strictly synth pop and just mm-hmm. kind of going into being a band that makes music to have fun with, and there'll be a lot of throwbacks to different kind of musical uh, eras. But mm-hmm. the the overall with more people involved, it's it's inevitable, right? <clears throat> yeah. yeah, and you might hear some new material. Well, yeah, we've that's, already that's, said that. That's what yeah. I've just been saying. Oh, sorry, I wasn't listening. Re- You've been point, playing yeah. with your pecker. No, <laughs> yeah, I was. It was in the way. <laughs> it always is. <laughs> All right. Cheeky I think song. I think we can leave that there. Yeah, on the toilet talk. 
yeah, right. yellow card, yellow yeah. card. Well, yeah, thank lo- you lovely for speaking having... to you, boys. So I've, I'm aware, like it's it's a bit strange me being the interviewer where I where I'm you know in the band. It's a bit sort of <laughs> like that that label, right? Mark by Mike, Mark Jacobs for Mark Jacobs by Mark by Mark <laughs> Jacobs. You know, it's a little or um, Obama awarding himself the, the the medal for service. You know, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, it's a bit self congratulatory. But like you know, thank you. I'm 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 a massive fan of the music. You know, I would, my my time is quite limited. Like I wouldn't give up my time. You know, to play play with a band that I didn't believe in, and I know Jay's the same, and I know that Enzo, you know, in terms of releasing the music, he he like quite routinely says that Iverson are one of his favourite bands, like full stop, like not qualified, you know, with by you know within the synth scene or whatever. It's like Iverson are one of my favourite bands, full stop. Oh, so, what a legend! Know, Very you've kind. got you've got a lot of people who believe in you. Oh, it's that's good nice to have to those. Yeah. yeah, and it's good to have haters as well. So sh- yes. shout out to the haters. Love you. <laughs> Love you, bye. <laughs> bye.